you know how like they call there's the country blumpkin and there's this there's the stranger you mm-hmm. know what the stranger is right no it's where you sit on your hand until it goes numb and then you touch yourself with it you call it the stranger i've never heard that yeah. <laughs> all right uh <laughs> So, this is episode 24. Did I do there? 24. Um, so, our guest today was supposed to be the Silver Fox, Tom Atkins. But... I'm right here. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there's a technical issue that's going to hold that one up a little bit. So, instead, today's guest is... I don't know. Haven't got anybody lined up yet. So we're going to record this before and we're going to do whoever our guest is. We're going to tack on to the end of this and it's going to be exciting. Whoever it is, it's going to be thrilling. It's going to be amazing. We're going to bump it in. Yeah. So no big deal. We'll, we'll get it sorted. Um, I actually, you know what I could do? I could, I could just, I'll say it right now who our guest is because I can dub in my voice. Today's guest is going to be Robbie Kiger. Robbie Kiger? Yeah, exactly. That's who that's who today's guest is. So, but people will know it before this airs because I'll find out and I'll put it up for people to ask questions and stuff. But as of us recording this, we're not sure who today's guest is. But anywho, um, <laughs> so we got we I don't say well we got a lot to get through today. I mean, not as many questions as normal, but we have a lot of stuff that people had sent us that and actually letters people had written us um when they were asking for stickers. Letters, we got letters, we get letters. Where do we start? Any get off my lawns is your get off my lawn being stuck in hotel rooms is that your get off my lawn? My get off my lawn is being uh, hi everybody, welcome to the show. I'm still in Australia. Um, I'm still in quarantine, and that's why your sound um, is, is not the greatest. Is, that's why my sound is not the greatest. I apologize. Uh, uh, so uh, I think I'm halfway. I'm just over halfway now. I have seven, six, uh, six more days um, of fourteen, and uh, it's beautiful outside. I can see out my window, and it's gorgeous. Sydney, Australia weather, gorgeous. Um, and uh, the window opens a little bit, and I can stick my little face out and smell the beautiful South Pacific air, and it's 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 great. I can't wait to get out there. Um, my get off my lawn moment is yes, being in this quarantine, and most of the food that they give me has cilantro in it. Oh, I hate cilantro. I hate cilantro and cabbage. They put cabbage in almost everything, and I'm like. Stop it. <laughs> so the food's been okay. Um, that's a get off my lawn moment. Um, what else is a get off my lawn moment? There was nobody above me. And then I think somebody moved in upstairs, a quarantiner, who is with a child. Because oh. all I hear is little footsteps running around above me constantly. And it's driving me insane. Um, so there's that on top of being stuck in here. Uh, or is there a child upstairs? Or, maybe it's in your mind. Or is there? Maybe, maybe I'm losing my shit, my proverbial shit. You're like Cusack in 1408. You're just kind of starting to starting to hear shit. That's exactly right. Well, last night the the apartment flooded, and, uh, <laughs> and then turned ice cold, and everything turned into ice. But. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so that's my get off my lawn, I guess. I can't say that I have a whole lot of uh, get off my lawn moments other than that because I'm stuck in a two-bedroom apartment. You know, it makes you wonder. Apartment. makes you wonder if there was, let's say there was an emergency, like there was a fire in the building, they had to evacuate everybody. Would you have to then right. start your quarantine all over again? You probably would. It's a good question. Somebody who asked me that before I even got here. There is a little piece of paper and part of the pack that they give you that if there's a if there's a an alarm, what to do and stuff like that. So uh, uh, I don't know. That's a good question. I hope not because I'd be like, <laughs> "Fuck that! Put me on a plane. I'm not doing that." Again. <laughs> my, nope. I've my... I've heard actually they're quarantining some people for 28 days. Can you imagine? It'd be 28 days later. When you got out, you come out and 
it's deserted. <laughs> right. Wouldn't you're like, that be crazy? You're like opening the door. It's it's been twenty can I come out now? There's nobody around. Yeah. Well, I'm in Australia, so that would mean it would be like Road Warrior. I'd come out and people are wearing bondage outfits and hockey masks and leather jackets and you know what? Before I get into my... their car and to... Before I get into my get off my lawn, let's talk about that because I watched Razorback last night. And what is it with the Australian films and that sort of crazy apocalypse uh, get ups? And I mean, even in that movie, which had nothing to do with the apocalypse, they, there was those guys that worked at the meat plant that were all kind of looked like they were out of the Road Warrior. I, I just don't, what is that with right. Australia and that? I mean, it's kind of cool, but at the same time, when you're in Australia, I've never seen anyone who looked like that. So, no, I haven't seen anyone wearing anything even remotely close to that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Which, by the I, way, I, I don't know. What a movie. Yeah. And not, not in a great way. I mean, it's, 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 it's a it's ridiculous the whole i mean i was mm -hmm. hoping you know i i got pretty fired up for razorback because a lot of people talked pretty big about it and i'm thinking i'm hoping this is going to be a scary like intense like jaws on the land you know and boy it's not it's right. it's like a i mean you know the guy was a music <laughs> video director big time back in the day it's almost like a weird yeah. music video with a killer pig and that first scene when it busts through the dude's house it just looks like this static mm -hmm. thing smashing through walls it, it doesn't i mean it's so bad uh i don't right. know I, i'm i'm sorry but uh razorback uh that goes on the goes on the list of, of films that are considered classics but really aren't that good <laughs> i think so yeah yeah so anyway that's my razorback uh review um so my get off my lawn is very is just more of me being a bitch uh, as me bitching a little bit so as everybody has seen right. there are many episodes i drink dasani well i went and i bought my dasani last night bought a new pack and they changed the bottle and if you notice right. it probably doesn't look like there's a huge difference there but the big difference is the cap see how the cap you know it's easy to hold from the cap but look at the new one. It's got this tiny ass cap. It's hard to I mean, you. It's hard to carry it. It's harder to get the thing off. I, I don't understand the purpose of that. And then they stopped putting cardboard in the bottom of the packs of the cases. So now they're all wonky when you try to carry them. Um, I, it looks like Dasani's trying to cut some corners. I'm not happy about it, Dasani. That's all I got to say. Get off my lawn. <laughs> thanks now had they actually been sponsoring the thing with you it's podcast <laughs> featured on youtube um i wouldn't be complaining uh -huh. but since i'm paying for it i'm complaining are you texting you look like you're checking out already i'm not checking out i'm right here oh okay you're looking down the whole time well i'm looking at an important business email that i just got regarding oh, okay very a deal so i was just kind of glancing at it so as to determine whether i need to abruptly respond to it or i can or it can wait can it wait because i can i can let um, you respond to it give me one second i'm wearing my uh slime anyway, here we go slime the, what um, was it saying oh, Oh, I had that. It made the, it's oh. it's gooey, drippy, oozy, cold, and clammy. Kind of like basically me. Yeah. So I I I supported. Oh, I had that and and purchased the shirt because I, I I'm oh, a lovely. fan of the slime. Even though it kind of looks like the shirt they gave us, uh -huh. just that has the splatter and said, "Oh, I had that." But my little shrine over here, yes. I, I I've decided. It's time to let it go, the shrine. Really? Yeah, you know, I, I appreciate all these things that fans gave me and made me and stuff like that, but I, I always feel mm -hmm. weird looking at it, you know, because it's me. Mm -hmm. um, and then I feel even weirder at being in the background of me on the show, kind of like, wow, that guy really likes mm -hmm. himself. No, nobody said anything, you know, it's just a... So anyway, I was just thinking, you know, I think it's time to just not... I'm not going to throw them away. I'm just going to put them 
in a box in the garage and I'm going to put something new there, like on that record shelf. Can't wait to see what it's going to be. I, I think I already know what, what I'm putting there. So, yeah. And it, it'll be more appropriate background. I think more, more. Oh, is it more, a thing with two heads? Is it it's a thing with heads? one head. It's a thing with one. Thing head. With one. Okay. Speaking of which, there's a gentleman who is doing some artwork for us. And um, what is his name? Let me. He is. he is very talented. His, uh, yeah, he. I mean, he's very talented. His stuff is really, really good. And uh, mm. he's he he wants to design. His name is Mark Beer. And I'll send you some uh, samples of his work. Um, okay. But anyway, he wants to design a shirt for us or a logo or he, he's he's mm. you know. But he had a cool idea. One of his ideas was uh, doing you and me as shrunken heads um, for for a thing with two heads logo, and he can do it very mm-hmm. realistic. I mean, he can he can do super realistic, or he can do cartoon mm-hmm. cartoony. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. I I'm not sure which direction we'd want to go with something like that. I don't even know if you like that idea. I kind of like that idea. The shrunken heads thing was kind of neat. I thought. I, I think I'd have to say to be quite a feat. Quite a feat to shrink my head. I know, well, my head would be like a smaller one, and yours would be, you know, you, you know. slightly bigger, small, slightly bigger. Um, so he actually did a logo. He he's trying to do some horizontal ground stuff for me as well, and he did a logo of the sign with my hair at the top, which I'm like, it's <laughs> it's funny, but I'm like, right. yeah, I don't think I want to. I don't want to <laughs> run with that. I'm already. You don't want to condone that haircut for everybody. No, because what if I it doesn't suddenly, work for everybody. What if it suddenly falls out? Then that's like, what are you gonna do about your logo, bro? So, oh, by the way, I, I should yes. have sent this to you. I don't. Can I message you stuff through this can, while we're talking? Probably not, huh? It's not like YouTube. Yeah, I can see it on my phone. Okay, I'll text it to you. So what I'll do? Some guy is selling a. Michael Some Myers. guy. He's selling a Michael Myers doll, okay, that he did. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it's interesting. And it's got this weird pumpkin that has like Trump's face on it, which is strange for some reason. That's not really why I'm sending it to you. But the thing is, the mask comes Ooh. off. All right. The mask comes off okay. and it's it's Nick underneath. Oh, <laughs> but, really? but the funny thing about it is it does look like Nick's face, but they gave him oh. this sort of I don't understand the hairdo. It's almost like, like if it's supposed to be James Jude Courtney's head, but Nick's face. Hmm. But it is fucking funny. Did you get the first one? Uh, you texted it. Yeah, uh, it's this is bad. It's it's kind of pixelated. The first one I sent you uh, isn't, yeah. but the second one, which I'm going to send you, is. Uh, I mean, I'm looking at it now. <laughs> it looks like dr phil kind of i know <laughs> well you know he kind of looks like the btk killer a little bit <laughs> yeah 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 he totally does oh my god that's really funny weird yeah why didn't he give him hair well he didn't he kind of give him some on the side it looks like he has a little on bit the on the sides and the sides yeah he gave him dr phil hair that's weird. Yeah. That's really funny though. I'm going to get into the letters we got. This is uh this is actually a Christmas card Anthony Landry sent us. Uh just said oh. as the year draws to an end remember it took us took all of us to get there. May your season be filled with kindness and 2020 filled with joy. And, and it has this little picture. I don't know what that's from. Do you know what that's from? Yeah, it's from uh yeah, I do know what that's from. Why don't I know? Isn't that from... Uh, is that Miracle on something street? 30, or something? 34th? I don't Miracle know. Miracle on 34th Street? I don't, I don't do know. But anyway, thank you, Anthony. Got Thanks, some, Anthony. What, a lot of people had sent in. I've been sending out stickers like a madman. So a lot of people yeah. have been receiving these incredible thing with two heads stickers here. They've been getting They're incredible. The They're incredible. You can yeah, see. they're incredible. Um, but no, I've been sending out a lot, and you get these too, a horse hologram. Um, 
but uh these are some of the people that i sent stickers to and they just wrote nice letters uh our good friend daniel caruso said dear sean and chris this envelope with stamp is for the stickers i really appreciate these thank you hope you guys had an awesome holiday and happy new year thanks so much for all you do we all look forward to all the podcasts and interviews you do. I'm really looking forward to the next live stream and the upcoming t-shirts. You guys are awesome. Well, that was before our last live stream. So you got it. So there's that. You're welcome. Uh, we got <laughs> one here from uh, Jess, uh, Joe Jesso, who said, uh, hello, Sean. Hope if it's cool. I sent, oh, he sent money for postage to Canada. Just looking for some free thing with two head stickers. Love the content on the channel. My wife and I never miss an episode. You and Chris are awesome. Highly entertaining. Do keep it coming. Um, uh, AKA Strum and Skull on YouTube. And he drew a little skull thing Ooh. there. Yeah. Strum and Skull. Yep. Well, thank you to you and your wife. Hello to both of you. Uh, I got to say, on the, based on that last letter... I got to say, I'm glad the holidays were over and I'm glad last year is over. I'm just glad. It just feels like. Yeah. I mean, 2020 started year, so great. It really did. I mean, there's been no drama. It's been just like, it's like a huge weight lifted on our shoulders. We're virus free. You mean this year? We're, you mean oh, 2021? No, 2021. That's what, I, yeah. <laughs> Never mind. My bad. I know. There's been no drama. There's been <laughs> no virus. There's been. I'm just, I, I know that part, that part fucking sucks. I'm just glad. Yeah, you know what? I take back what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was wondering where you're going with that. Um, I, you know, I was trying to be optimistic. You know, every, you know, I'm not always your grumpy cat. You know, you guys yeah. are always saying I'm grumpy cat. Look at me. I just threw out a nugget of optimism yeah. and hope. And you just took it from me. You took it from me. Thanks for the free stickers and the awesome show. You guys are both super fun to watch. Hopefully shirts will be next. Bob. That's from Bob. Thanks, Bob. Um, Everybody's wanting those shirts. I'm really yeah. appreciative of the shirts. That's awesome. Let's, let's, uh, hopefully the shirt thing comes around. Yeah. Makes, makes it happen. Love the podcast since episode one. So glad you're doing more, uh, horse hog grounds as well. Keep it all or keep it up. You guys rock. Thanks for all the entertainment. Take care, Dennis. Um, Let me ask you a question. Thanks, Dennis. Let me ask you a question. I'm just going to make little comments after every letter. Okay. That'll make the show go quick. It starts subject. <laughs> well, what else do we got? We got this, and then that's it. Um, so I, got, I got stuff. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> your horse color grounds your location fascination. What is it about that that you love so much? What what is it? Is it is it revisiting history? Is that what it is for you? What it, what do you think it is? Not only with you, but people that like to go to movie locations. What do you think that is? I feel, and I've said this before, that I feel that when you visit a filming location of one of your favorite films, it's like going back to your old childhood home or like an elementary school because you feel like you've been there. Cause you grew up with it. Mm -hmm. Although you've never really been there because you're walking around and you mm -hmm. recognize it. You know what I mean? So it's a nostalgia thing. Right. It is. That's it, what it is for me. So it's sense memory. Yeah. Nostalgia, yeah. sense memory, nostalgia. Okay. All yeah. right. That's completely what it is for me. Is it? I, a, it. I mean, yesterday yeah. I did some fast times locations. I did some twilight zone, the movie locations for upcoming, upcoming episodes. And after that, I went to my old neighborhood and uh, had lunch at Perry's Pizza, which is one of the few real Perry's Pizzas that remains. Um, cause oh, I, and I, I can't wait to go there. I, yeah. I didn't even know that. Was, I have to go there. I have yeah. to go there. Did you ever go to one? Did you, did you ever used to oh, go to a Oh, God. I used to go to Perry's Pizza every, every, oh, all where was, time. where was the one you used to go to? I used to go to the one in the Delamo Mall. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. They all they, the time. The I, one the I Delamo used to, Mall was my hand. Yeah. Valley girl Sorry. and Jackie Brown. That's right. Delamo Mall. They had Perry's pizza. And then around the corner was caramel corn. Mm -hmm. or whatever the popcorn place was with the red and white striped boxes that, you know, 
And then next to that was the UA Theater, where, where the United Artists Movie Theater, where I saw almost, where I saw the thing for the first time on opening night. And those theaters had upstairs, you would go upstairs, and the, each theater was upstairs, had its own stairs. And you could mm -hmm. smoke in those movie theaters at that time. I remember that. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, I loved the Delamo moment. And that's where Robert thing. Forster went to kill some time to see a movie. Yep. Right. Um, yeah, I used the Perry's I used to go to the most was in Buena Park Mall. Um, but the one I went to yesterday that I will take you to is in Garden Grove, which was a, a few oh. a few I'd say mile and a half from my house. It wasn't that far, but for some reason I used to always go to the one in the mall because I used to love going to the mall, so uh, but right. yep, it's still good stuff. Those square okay. slices, oh boy. Um, Sean, still good. That's very good. Thanks for doing this. It feels weird. I've not sent a self-addressed stamped envelope since I was a kid. Ha ha. Love the show. Thanks for bringing some levity to a difficult year. Greg Mitchell, uh, aka TCE author, on the on the YouTube on the YouTube's the many YouTube's. Um, oh, here we go. We got stuff. We got stuff. Sean and Chris, here's what? some stickers. Here's some stickers for you guys in trade for some of your stickers. Check out my IG pages when you can and keep up the great work. Thank you, Travis. Uh, Trevor last on IG, and he sent us each a couple of these cool little VHS stickers and a couple oh, of these. Oh, very cool. Like Bob's Big Boy looking stickers so cool we got, we got like some those. stickers yeah those will you send those to me here in australia please Thanks. i will not you're gonna have to wait till you get home um let's Son see this boy this is this one's jam-packed this is from our good friend it's all for you demon oh yeah uh sean and christopher thank you for all you do your podcast is amazing and a wonderful escape during a very dull year please find my enclosed self-addressed stamped envelope thank you for the opportunity oh, yeah. at some sticker fun as a kid i wanted to join the motley crew sin club was but was afraid to ask my mom what a self-address what a s-a-s-e stood for thinking it was possibly something satanic and sexual lol nerd childhood take four <laughs> <laughs> it's all for you demon and he sent us some of his own stickers check these out these are cool and we're gonna have to figure out who gets what well this i don't know if this is a sticker or just a weird little car but he sent us these well kiss me oh too. nice they're like little vhs very cool things. he sent uh you send me that yeah. oh this one has your name on it this one uh, it says it's oh, all nice. for you demon celebrating the fun of being a kiss fan and then on the back, it says, Christopher, thank you for sharing your talent with us. The horror community owes you. Take care. And it's signed, oh, it's signed wow, by... Oh, thank you. It's signed by him and his two dogs, apparently, because there's the two dogs. Oh, very cool. Yes, I love and it. And then thank this you. one... An animal lover. <laughs> another sticker. <laughs> nice. Uh, very cool. Another. I'm, I'm claiming this one. You're going to want this one. Of course you are. How cool is that? Oh, it's like is. it's like the Asylum album cover. Uh -huh. but I, I'm assuming that's him, and then we got the yeah. his dogs, and then you know the the creature yeah. from Phantom of the Opera, which yeah. is just the I, on post I want Timberwolf. That. I want that mask. I, you know what? I'm so pissed off. I used to have one, and I sold it. Yeah. And and I came across a picture of it the other day when I was going through my stuff, and I'm like, why did I sell that? You dumbass. Are there any? Are there any on eBay or anything? Because I want to get one. Well, there is one, nice. but it's the wrong color. It, there was because they did a black and a white one. Right. So he, this is he wrote right. me the card as well, and then nice. last one, it's like Creatures of the Night. It says it's all for you, Demon, with the dogs. Very cool. So, so we got stuff from him. Uh, our friend Sawyer Smoke said, "Hey, Sean, thanks for the opportunity." For some free shit i've been loving thing with two heads and it generally feels like a community a community full of horror nerds coming together every episode is coming to coming together or oh yeah okay coming together i had to see how it was spelt um everything we're all coming together 
Yeah. <sighs> Everything from the get off my lawn segments to the random food sampling to you showing Chris what you got this week while Chris didn't get shit. <laughs> Hopefully I'll have something worthy to send you and Chris to add to your collections in the future. Thank you for answering my questions every week. Keep the episodes coming and I can't wait for some merch to drop. I'll be sure to rep the stickers with pride. Sawyer Smoke. Well, since you, you brought it up, should I show off some shit I got that you, and you don't have nothing because you're in Australia? So wait, you got sent a bunch of shit and I didn't no. because I'm here? No, uh, he's saying that I show off the stuff I get that I buy. Uh, well, you buy a lot more shit than I do. I just got the Eyes Wide Shut soundtrack. This came out. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm not interested in that. You don't like that? It was a terrible movie. I like that movie. Fucking what about the movie? Well, Ramstein, dudes with shirts off. Come on. Yeah, that's your speed. That's a great album. That's totally your speed. Uh, my least favorite film in the series. Well, Jason Takes Manhattan vinyl. With the, with the slip mat came with it. This was part of the subscription. I would I would have never bought this soundtrack. Right. Uh, got the Mandalorian box set. Okay. Ooh, what it already selling for a lot on eBay? Is it vinyl? Yeah, it's every it's soundtrack for every episode. That's all right. Don't be a hater. I'm not. It's not my thing, man. Got the new Tron Legacy uh, expanded edition. And okay. Cool. I think, that, I think that's it. I think. Oh wait, no, there's Is one. that it. There's more. That's a video drum seven inch that they put nice. out recently. Very the cool. New Descendant seven inch suffrage. That's it. Now I'm done. That's a lot of shit. Hello, Sean and Christopher. I discovered your. I just discovered your shows on YouTube recently and became an immediate fan. I love the banter you guys have on Thing with Two Heads, as well as the interviews, not to mention all the cool locations we see on Horrors Hall Grounds. Keep up the great work. I have enclosed a postage-paid return envelope in hopes to score some of the sweet stickers. Thanks for all you're doing for the horror community. Russ Kennedy. Now, all these people that I'm reading, they already all have their stickers. Um, eh, oh, good. So they're happy. Oh, got, we got Thanks, more stickers. Russ. We got more stickers. Hey guys, thanks what? So much. more stickers. Thanks so much for sending out stickers. Can't wait for other merch. These people want merch. I threw in a couple merch. of stickers for my Instagram for you both as well. Love what you're doing and thanks for the great content. Cody, and he sent us a couple of these. The cozy collector. He looks cozy in that picture. He's like sit he's got a Myers mask, maybe. Is that a Myers mask? No, it's a yeah, looks kind of like a ghost mask. No, it looks kind of like a scarecrow mask, kind of like a weird okay, scarecrow. But he's Thank gone. you, Cody. All right, so that's all for the letters. Now we got stuff. We got stuff. Stuff? Yeah. We got stuff. People send stuff. Well, some of it you got already. Excellent. So we'll start with um, our good friend Todd Jara at Texas Customs. He sent us each uh, these tumblers. Yes. Yes. And he very, has... very nice. Very, very, very well done. Here's yeah, his I info like right here. That's some of the stuff. It That's is. like his website, I guess. Um, but thank you. Thank you, Todd. Much appreciated for the Tumblr. And the back says, get off my lawn if I didn't show it. So. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. There's something inside it. I didn't look inside it. Looks like a sticker. What? Oh, no. It's just a thing for. Who made the tumbler, I think. Or no, it's like yeah. washing directions. I don't know where I'm going to put all these uh, stickers. I put them all over my... Um, I have a cabinet in my garage. I put them all over. This next one was from Mike Mike Johnson, a.k.a. The Runner. Um, he said, Sean and Christopher, thanks for making a difference for the fans. Hope you have an awesome holiday. For Sean is a Garbage Pail Kids coffee table book. He sent me this book. Wow. It's it's like got all the different cards and stuff like the, and he mm -hmm. also included an original Stone Sean card. Oops, piece of tape on it. There we go. 
You see it? Cool. And then cool. for you, he gave you, which you have at home now, because I gave it to you before we left, the Silent Night, Deadly Night Blu-ray and the Chris Hiss cards. Yes. That's right. I got I, I I really enjoyed both of those, actually. I watched that that uh, that uh, Blu-ray when I um uh, during the holiday and um stared at my card <laughs> and, and and celebrated it enjoyed it now thank you got a christmas card from Cinderella oh. says holy crap you're real this is from uh, <laughs> it didn't sign the card but he wrote a letter so um the letter was in the card oh boy this is actually a bit lengthy uh, to Sean and Christopher, a thing with Two Heads podcast. Happy holidays, fellas. I love the show and look forward to every new episode. I just find it so awesome that an Academy Award winner helped create the most recent Michael Myers masks and effects. What you guys do helps people get away from these trying times and enjoy something positive. I'm really happy you guys dis discussed trying to make the show positive and having a zero tolerance on the discussing politics. Well, not totally zero. 99.9 .9. uh it's like following the same rule for my buddies and i have when we're drinking discussing religion and politics are forbidden and not allowed um let's see he goes into some more detail here on a bunch of stuff but he said i wanted to send sean a couple of items to try i hope you enjoy these dunkaroos i guess they were really popular in the 90s but now they're selling out quickly in stores i was also going to send that michael myers ipa but i know you guys just got some so the other item was this taffy apple beer that was recently released by a brewery near me in Chicago. Now, I know you're not a big drinker, but I thought this might surprise you. This beer was all over the local news when it, for, when it came out in the fall. The demand was so high, they brewed more a few weeks later and sold out instantly. Anyways, I hope you enjoy it. I'm willing to put my money on it that you'd like it better than the Myers IPA. Share, share it with Christopher. Uh, now onto the book. Hopefully Christopher don't have it. I got a few at half price bookstores in my area. One of the stores created a section for movie novelizations. I came across neighbors. Hopefully he didn't have it yet. If so, give it away to someone. He did not have it yet because I showed it to him already. So he sent you the novelization of neighbors. Oh, I know. I'm super excited about that. I'm so excited about that. Yeah. So I'm so excited about that. Thank That's you. coming to you when you get home. Send it to me in Australia. I need something to read. Hurry up. Get it here and tomorrow. Maybe overnight it so I have something to read. And as soon as you get back, I'm going to wait until you get back, and we'll both try this on the show together and see. Okay. Affy Tapple, a bushel of apples, ale with apple juice, caramel, and peanuts. Oh, uh, oh. I'm at, I'm you at, lost I'm, me at peanuts. You're not, you don't want to try it? You no, know, I'll try it. Of course I'll try it. <laughs> but, ooh. And then he sent me some some crap. He sent me some Fruit Loop Jumbo Snacks, which I have had already. But Dunkaroos, I've never tried. I, I've never had these before. What are those? It says vanilla like cookies. Vanilla cookies and vanilla frosting with rainbow sprinkles. Sounds like ooh. something Nay would be into. Sounds like something I'd be into. So thank you, Brett Patrick. Oh, Brett, Brett, excuse me, Brett Stortenbecker. Brett Stortenbecker. Thank, thank you very you, much. Brett. We appreciate it. That was it. awesome. I can't, can't wait to read that book. Thank you so much. And we will try the drinks on a future episode once he's back and I can right. get it to him and we can chill them. And so it'll probably be a few episodes before those, those beers make an appearance. Oh, yeah. It'll, it'll be a while. Can I use the restroom real quick? Okay. Go ahead. I'm going to try one of these Dunkaroos while you're gone. Yeah, I want one of those. You're not getting one. Let's see. Let's see what this is all about. Ooh, those are good. These are good. Yep. 
Hi, everybody, I'm back. Where did he go? Let me guess. He went to give his girlfriend a Dunkaroo. Yep, she's very excited. Did she's you go give excited. her a Dunkaroo? Yeah, I'm eating these, though. Look at it. You, what I call my penis. You, you I call my frosting? penis a Dunkaroo. I'm trying to eat, man. You really got to go there. <laughs> All right. It's a Dunkaroo. Before we get into questions, you watched anything yeah. interesting lately? Anything worth mentioning? Um, well, I finished Schitt's Creek. Love Schitt's Creek. Love it. I, I I love it so hard. And I the last episode, I cried through the whole thing. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. Cried through the whole thing. The last episode. Um, no. I love that show. I wish it kept going. But, but it's kind of cool that they stopped it. It's kind of cool that they were like, no, nope, we're going out on a high note. We're moving on, doing something else. I think it's great. I wish but more it, shows would do that. But it's so weird that they they had already planned to stop it right before the show blew up. And it's yeah, like, they kind of feel like now you should keep it going because now, every, you know, right. now everybody wants it. Uh-oh, right. here we go. But it's a very her. Canadian mentality, you know. The girlfriend is here with the Dunkaroos. What? Right. How's your Dunkaroo? They are amazing. It's like a trip back into my happy childhood moments. I'm um, so ha I can't wait to try them and get mine when I come home. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's like going back to my 30s. See what I did there. <laughs> <laughs> are they anything like uh, those? Are they anything like those mother's circus animal cookies? No, they're better. No. It's just uh, like a little better. vanilla cookie with like a weird frosting. The frosting tastes uh, like funfetti. Yeah, like a funfetti flavored frosting. But anyway, I love those Mother's Animal Circus cookies. I love those things. Next time you come over, we have so many of those. We bought these like snack bags yeah. and we got sick of them. Yeah. And now we were sitting on tons of, of those little snack bags of those. I'll take them all. I'll take them all. <laughs> like you gave us the PB&Js, we'll give you those. Right. Except our, <laughs> yeah, ours won't be stale. <laughs> no, what's up? What you <laughs> Back to the show. So, Shit's Back Creek. To... You watch Shit's Creek. I, 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 I finished that. Love it. Um, and, you know, it's a very Canadian mentality thing that you know they're they're not as greedy as as freaking Americans are with their you know dragging shit out for money. Um, which is a refreshing thing. What else did I watch? You watch. Um, it's going to come I watched, back. So they're going to make a movie or something. You watch. I, I, I'd, be, I'd be totally down for it. And I'm usually not, you know, that way. I finished 30 Rock. I think I already talked about that. Yeah. On that show. Um, uh, what else? I've been, I haven't been in the horror world that much lately. I've been... Because of quarantine and traveling and such all the darkness in the world, you know, I've been wanting to watch funny stuff and keep it light, you know, a little levity. So uh, I've been doing that. Um, I love Christopher Guest movies. I just watched uh, For Your Consideration again, mm -hmm. which I, I love. It's super funny. You know what's weird is um, Nay, Nay doesn't seem to like Christopher Guest movies, yet she loves Schitt's Creek, which is like, I feel like they're totally the same universe. But Absolutely. Yeah. I, love, I mean, I but love she's Chris only Guest watched, movies. she's only seen Best in Show, which I feel is the best uh, Christopher Guest movie. If you don't like that one, it I is. It, it is. And Waiting for Guffman is pretty damn amazing, too. Yeah. Like that. Amazing. Um, what else have I watched? I'm trying to think of something cool I watched. I watched, did we already talk about Wonder Woman? No. <laughs> I watched Wonder Woman. Please tell I me. I've, I've only read the reviews. It's awful. It's a terrible movie. That's what I keep hearing. Um, wow. It's, but I didn't like the first one. So this, this is just wow. That's I thought the I first one wasn't about. bad. I mean, I'm not a fan. I watch um, it once. I don't never need to see it again. But I hear this one right, is just that. like incredibly bad. Oof. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> um, what else? What else did I watch? Um, I went down a Bill Hader YouTube uh, black dark hole, uh, you know, hole. Mm -hmm. Bill Hader, I just, he cracks me up and I can watch him do anything. It's so funny. Uh, what else? Something cool. I'm trying to think of something cool. 
I'm sure I watched something. I'm sure it will come back to me. Um, I've got one. I was also, oh, I watched Drive, which is one of my favorite movies. Mm -hmm. well, that's dark. It's not yeah, a feel good awesome. movie. It, it isn't, but for whatever reason, it makes me feel good. It's, I, I relate to that movie so bad, so much. I don't know why. It's just my, and I made a short film. I, I watched saw. my short film. I watched it. Which, which I couldn't use the music that I, that I edited the thing together to because of Instagram. They won't let me use that fucking song, which is dumb. Um, um, so it's not as good as it should have been. And I've tried to send it to you numerous times, but for I whatever checked the reason, other, I even, checked the other email. It didn't come through. So strange. I can't get it to you for whatever reason. But uh, other people have seen it, and they love it. They think it's great. So. I liked it with the, but, uh, the replacement music. <laughs> but uh, I think that's it. That's all I've been watching. That's That's it. Well, I've got one. Uh, so, Nay, well, Nay, I love Nay. You know this. Um, she, sure. she, when she gets something in her head that she wants me to see, she obsesses over it and won't let it go. And she started talking about mm -hmm. this movie called In Dreams. Have you ever seen it with Robert Downey Jr. and Annette Benning? Directed by the guy that did yes, I think Game, I have seen. Neil Jordan. Right. You you think you've seen it? I don't remember it. I I remember the movie, but I don't remember the movie. Like I, she's basically I think having I've seen it. It's she's having visions of uh, Robert Downey Jr. Like he's uh, <clears throat> kidnapping children, and, and there's all these apples. He's in like an apple orchard like place. You'd have if you saw it, you'd remember. Oh the God, apples. no! I haven't seen it. Though. Okay, you must see it. Um, and I don't mean that because it's great. Um, so she, she said she saw it when she was a kid and it, it really freaked her out or whatever. There was a great movie. Hadn't seen it in years. Have to see it. So I got Lawton to get it for me and I, I watched it with her. And as I'm watching mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. it is so bad. Like mm -hmm. the acting, I mean, and that Benning, I don't know what, what was going on with her, but it's, it's so bad and I, and i'm making comments and i can tell it's starting to piss nay off a little bit because i'm not taking her movie serious but then there's this one scene that is just so ridiculous where she's in a mental institution like a padded room and she starts screaming mm -hmm. at these two like nurses that come in to try to talk to her and i started dying laughing and she started laughing too she finally gave in that it's really really bad and then we watch that scene again <laughs> And I, I, I might put a clip of it here because it is so funny. She's freaking out and she's telling them she wants to use the phone. And she goes, let me use the phone. She's saying it like that. And she's like looking at the, at the nurse. She's like, who are you? Who are you? And they're like, I'm so-and-so. And so and she goes, well, fuck you both. I need the phone. Well, give me the phone. I need to make a call. I need to make it now. Give me the phone. Like that. And she's saying it like that. It is. I was in tears. I was laughing so hard. I just want to watch it for that. I made a little clip of it. Can I text it to you or does it cost money to take yeah, it? Yeah, please. Yeah, go ahead. Dude, you got to watch this clip real quick. And you can hear me laughing because I I literally filmed it off the screen. <laughs> it, it's it's a real quick clip. I'm excited. Like, I'm like excited. Nay, want, Nay wants you to see it. Um, she's like sitting here waiting for the reaction. That's how much she's, how excited she is. I even showed it to Nick when I went over to his house yesterday. He was cracking up. <laughs> I've been I've been watching some stuff that like movies that for whatever reason have eluded me, you know, like uh that are somewhat right. considered somewhat classics, I guess. Like Alone in right. the Dark with Donald Pleasance and Matthew or excuse me, um you got it? Okay, watch it. Do you do, do you want me to watch this now? Go ahead, right. watch it, watch it right now. Yeah. I want to see the reaction. That's pretty good. <laughs> I, mean, I do it. And I want to use the telephone. I'd like you to sit on the bed. And I'd like to tell you that I just jumped out of my husband's dead body. 
And I go, you use the phone. I can hear you laughing. That's great. <laughs> Dude, that movie is no, I, don't so... have, I don't have to watch the movie. Now. Oh, my God. Here's the thing. When she told me about this, I'm like, I've never heard of this movie. Neil Jordan directed, starring Annette Bening, Robert Downey Jr. I'm like, how did I've never heard of it? How did it 1999? Right. How did I miss this movie? I think because it was so fucking bad, it came and went. I mean, oh, I'm sure. I'm it is. Sure. I, it is. Was it? Was it in the theater? Did it oh yeah, it theater it's, it, dude. This is a big budget movie. When you see all the shit that's in the movie, dude. Yeah, this movie had to have been like a just a massive flop. Massive. And it looks expensive because so much shit happens underwater. Like there's underwater sets yeah. and stuff. There's tons of underwater stuff. Because yeah. yeah. she keeps having these That's visions. That's the director that did like... Crying Game. He did like Rattle and Hum, where he An came from. Interview with a Vampire. And... Yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, it's bad. None of those movies were very good. <laughs> I don't like any of his movies. I've never liked any of his movies. So anyway, back to the shit I watch. Yeah. I just watch Alone in the Dark. Uh, yeah, not a good movie. Um, I just watch Massacre at Central right. High, which it's a. I actually kind of liked it. It's kind of like feels like a made for TV mm -hmm. film, but has gore and cursing and titties and. Anyway, um, I kind of enjoyed it in a weird way. It's a good idea. The concept is good. Um, I revisited Night of the okay. Comet, which I hadn't seen in a long time. I love that movie more every time Ooh. I watch it. You don't like Night of the Comet? Do you? Uh, it's okay. It, I, it's That's one of those movies that everybody goes bonkers over. And I'm like, it's fine. I don't think it's that great. It's well, I'm the same way. But every time I revisit it, I go, okay, I get why people like this now. It's so corny. It's like Valley Girl right. meets Dawn of the right. Dead. You know, um, I watched right. I Spit yeah. on Your Grave, the original. Because there's this one right. dude, Mike Sullivan, if you're out there, has been bugging me for like two years to watch it. You have to watch the original I Spit on Your Grave. It is so bad. So bad. <laughs> oh, dude. And, you, you know, they're just constantly, the different guys constantly are, like, attacking the girl and raping her. Right? Yeah. And the second guy yeah. that rapes her on the rock, that is the most exaggerated sex uh -huh. scene I've ever seen in my life. I mean, he is, like... Right. Like, thrust... I, mean, I can't even exaggerate the thrust. <laughs> He's like, ah. Oh. Oh, I mean, it, it's a, I was laughing my <laughs> ass off and it's supposed to be horrific, right. but it's like, right. I looked him up on IMDb and I'm like, yeah, he never did another film. I'm, I'm not shocked right. that that was his one and only performance <laughs> for the first time. I watched Alice, Sweet Alice, which I'd never seen. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Very interesting. Total ripoff of Don't Look Now, but totally inferior. Um mm -hmm. Not, not very good. Um, so th I'm I'm starting to realize. I guess there's a reason I never watch these movies because nobody was really recommending them. But it's right. one of, you always see the poster art or you know of these films. Yeah, yeah. I think the post the the poster art and the taglines were always better than the films with yeah. these kinds of movies. Yeah, For sure. Yeah, another like uh, the poster for Just Before Dawn. I always love that poster. I finally watched it, and it's it's not it's not terrible. You know, it's funny. Is Just Before yeah. Dawn would be a good movie if they had actually done something interesting with the killer instead of just putting a Frankenstein forehead on him. Right. You know, <laughs> I mean. The, it's literally just a big fat hillbilly with a Frankenstein forehead, like really badly right. put on. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, it's funny. Those, those, those movies are, are like, I remember that time. That's the VHS heyday. You know, mm -hmm. and it was like, yeah. you would go to the VHS store, the video store and you, you know, the cover was always, you're always chasing that dragon, you know? And I remember prophecy was like that for me, you know, like the, 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 the mutant, bear pig thing yeah bear pig man whatever it was you know that one was 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 like that for me i saw the cover and i was like had to see it and i, I got it and i watched it I was like it's it such a bummer blood beach not that blood beach had a great cover 
But I just remember for whatever reason, I wanted Blood Beach to be, you know, have the person being sucked down into the, you know, sand. And I was excited about that and saw the movie. And it's fucking terrible. Yeah. It's, it's just so bad. And there was so many of those around that time. It was all about the, the cover art. All about the cover art. Well, you know what's funny is with Blood Beach, I remember when that movie came out and they were showing the commercial on TV and you'd see the, the person getting mm. sucked into the sand. That terrified me. Mm. And when I would go to the beach, I used to be scared to lay on the sand because of that commercial. And I hadn't even seen the movie. <laughs> So, did you happen to see the trailer for Coming to America 2? I did. Thoughts? <laughs> I, I think it looks like Coming to America 1. I saw it already. I don't know. I, I, I like Coming to America. I, I think it's a fun movie. It's, uh, you know, I, I always have liked it. Of course, you know, um, but I feel like with this one, it's the same movie again, of course. It, I just feel like it's, I don't know. It's, it's, I'll probably but come watch on. it. Come on, isn't Dawn of the Dead not, the no. same movie as Night of the Living Dead? I mean, <laughs> it's just, you know. uh, yeah, but I think when it comes to horror and sci-fi and stuff, I have a little different take on that than comedy. Comedy mm -hmm. to me, I, I don't want to comedy to me it's harder to watch the same movie over and over than it is for horror i think i think it's two different experiences and i think rehashing a comedy it's like you know it's like meatballs 2 or airplane 2 or you know any kind of sequel to a comedy i always have a hard time with you know, know come why. to think of I it can you think into it because i've seen it. can you think of a comedy sequel that's better than the original i can't better than the original off the top of my head i can't off the top of my head, I can't. I'd have to really think about it. I'm sure there's somebody out there watching this that's going to go, bear, but the bear, bear, the bear. And they're going to No, but I'm thinking to myself, that. yeah, like Meatballs 2 was horrendous. Had, you know, you know, that wasn't even. It was, oh, God. Caddy was, Shack 2. Oh, yeah. You know, you know, but, you're like, but like, you can't, Fletch 2 wasn't as good as the originals. Ghostbusters 2 wasn't no. as good as the original. Um, Porky's right. 2 wasn't as good as um, the original. Right. Nutty Professor 2 wasn't as good. Either, you, know? you know, it's like there's I, I, I'm hard pressed to pick one. I mean, I, I guess the, the National Lampoon Vacation movies, you could you could. But I don't Would, know if they're direct sequels. But I, well, they but, are. They are. I, 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 don't, I guess so. I don't know. if I don't think Christmas Vacation is better than Vacation. Oh, oh, no, 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 it isn't. But they're good. They're watchable. Good. Yeah, well, actually, no, European European not. European vacation was the second one. That's right. Right. Which is definitely but, but nothing not beats the first. One. Yeah. No, nothing beats it. But uh, that's how I feel about coming to America. You're going to go, and it's going to be the same jokes, with the same people, and the same thing. And, and you know, um, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not that interested in that. But I'll probably watch it. Well, I'm excited for it. The barbershop scene looks awesome. I'm excited. I, I, yeah. I love those characters. I'm glad to see them back. Yeah. I'm sure it's not going to be yeah. nearly as good as the original, but I'm I'm looking forward to it. But that's a good question, guys. If you're watching this, is it can anybody think of a com comedy sequel that's better than the original? I mean, I can think of sequels that are better than the originals, but not a comedy. Um, that that's a right. Yeah, and it's funny is Nan that's and I just revisited Godfather one and two well, she had never seen them before but i always remember people talking about how the second one's better and i didn't think it was mm -hmm. i think the first one's better after watching mm -hmm. them back to back mm -hmm. um but, well that's like people with aliens people people always yeah. they lean towards aliens the second one not me and like no way the first one is a masterpiece it I'll, blows everything away although i think t2 is better than terminator um, and I also think that's true. Empire yeah. Strikes yeah. Back is better than Star Wars. Um, true. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But these are like again going back to our conversation. These aren't comedies, you know. What I mean? And I know we both so, agree that Friday Thirteenth Part Two is better than Part One. So it is. Indeed. So, um, 
All right. Well, let's get to the questions. We're sitting there yapping about these movies. Let's get to the questions. Uh, Fear the Juggalo says, as always, thanks for keeping me entertained. Question for Chris. Has there ever been any movies yeah. you've worked on that have never seen the light of day? Yes. Um, I have to think. The one off the top of my head is a Tales from the Crypt. It was supposed to be a third Tales from the Crypt movie. I believe it was called, it ended up being called Resurrection or something. I can't remember what the final title, but it was a Tales from the Crypt film. We shot it in Jamaica. Craig Schaefer and Jennifer Gray starred in it. Wow. Um, and uh, I can't remember the, the, the type, but never saw the light of day. You shot I think it in Jamaica. Maybe you can find it, bootleg or something. We shot it in Jamaica. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. You know, they shot yeah. popcorn yeah. in Jamaica. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. I know. It's r- weird, right? The All that was in that movie yeah. was the uh, interior of a house and then the theater. But that theater yeah. was in Jamaica. Huh. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. But yeah, that's one off the top of my head that, that didn't see the light of day. Um, there are a lot of movies that did that I wish didn't. <laughs> um, he, has anyway, a fo- he has a follow-up question for both of us said if you guys were asked to work on a victor salva film would you accept i guess victor it depends salva. i guess it depends on how good the script was and who was attached to it and i mean if you're if you're thinking would i not work would either of us not work with him because he's the guy who directed powder and jeepers creepers that guy right. um i yeah. mean you know the guy was convicted. I liked Powder. I thought Powder's. I think Powder's a good film. I think the first Jeepers Creepers is a good film. I think they're both good films. You yeah. know, I mean, the guy yeah. has th- that. It's been over thirty years since that shit happened. He paid his dues. People are deserve a second chance. I mean, we're living in this cancel culture right now. Um, you know, the guy's still I making. Agree. You know, it, I mean, look, I, I'm. I don't obviously. You know, I don't want to get too deep into that. What, what that was all about and stuff, but mm-hmm. I, you know, and I certainly don't take it lightly, but I, yeah. I do agree with you that the cancel culture is, is out of control, and I do believe people deserve second chances. I absolutely 100% believe that, because none of us are perfect. And, and, uh, um, and I think I, the I, guy yeah, has made like six movies since that happened, so, you know, do we keep trying to crucify the guy every time he tries to work i mean it's i I mean again i don't agree with what happened but you know this is a hypothetical i I mean i'd have to again it's i'd have to meet the guy talk to him yeah read the script what's it all about what are we doing yeah i mean i'd have to bet it (laughs) you know um bobby hall wants to know christopher what made you want to get into acting and how did you pursue it? And he also wants to know, Sean, how much money have you spent on printer ink printing out all these comments and questions? Uh, actually, <laughs> I bought this laser jet printer that doesn't take hardly that much ink. I've had it for almost a year and I haven't replaced the ink yet. Way better than the standard print printers. Way better. Anyway, go ahead and you answer the question. There you go. There you go. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I always had an interest in it since I was a kid. I think again. I think I told the story of the Lon, the Lon Chaney link. You know, the great mm-hmm. actor Lon Chaney Senior, who was a great actor as well as a great makeup artist, of course. Um, and uh, I think that's what inspired me. And then over time, various actors inspired me to want to try it. And I think it was a challenge of something I always wanted to do and be in front of the camera. And, and so he took lessons and things like that. And, and, um, and I don't know, it was just a thing where it was like, I thought I had something to offer. I might've been wrong, <laughs> mm. but I did. Um, I didn't develop as much as I would have liked to, but, uh, and I tried it. I just, you know, I didn't want to regret. I didn't want to get older. I might go back to it. I think I'd be a better, I, I, I was just talking to the, about this to Stephanie the other day. I think I'd be a better actor older. I think I'll be a better actor now that I'm getting older. I think I'll be able to be better 
artistically and also playing more roles. But I, I, I just wanted, I didn't want to have any regrets. I didn't want to look back on my life and go, you know, I should have at least tried that. I should have at least tried. And I can safely say that I tried and gave it a good go and did okay for the little bit of time that I tried it. So, mm-hmm. there you go. By the way, I want to give a shout out to John Beachy, who's been commenting like a madman on every video on my page. <laughs> um, too many to even <laughs> single out, but thank you for your enthusiasm and your support, Mr. John Beachy. Thank you. Um, Easy the thank third. You, John. Easy the third said, Chris. Working on Suicide Squad, did you interact <clears throat> with Will Smith or Margot Robbie? Um, anything to say about uh, the big names you've worked on or worked with? Not necessarily shit talking, but just in general. Anything to say about them? I don't know. Did you work with either of them on Suicide Squad? I mean, yeah. I mean, I was on set every single day with them. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I didn't really work closely to them, but of course over the course of six months of shooting a movie and you're on set with them every day, you, you, you know, hellos, goodbyes, good afternoons, you know, good days. Um, passing comments, you know, good days. Um, and being on set, you know, making a film together, you talk, yeah, they have very lovely people, very nice, very professional. Um, they're cool people. Yeah. I, I interact with everybody who's on the movie. Try to, you, you're, you're a little circus family for a few months and then you and then you split up and go your separate ways and sometimes you come back and work on other movies with people. So, yeah, good people. Adam Boyette said, another great episode, guys. Question for Sean. I was always curious on the Halloween box set if there was a reason that Halloween 6 didn't get a specific making of feature like the other films did on the set. All of the features for part six were very well done, but were they done as separate features to add the amount of content for the release? Or was it perhaps shot as a making of and couldn't quite make it into the edit, so it was decided to split the interviews up? Did maybe the absence of the director and leads of the film and the participation of the features have a factor in this decision? That box set is the crown jewel of my Blu-ray collection, so I appreciate all the hard work you did on it. Okay, so... To answer your question, when I was hired to work on that box set, I was assigned specific films. I I did all the features. Now, mind you, I had worked on prior releases to those films that were in the box set, so I am all over a bunch of them. But for that particular box set, I was hired to do Part 4, Part 5, and H2O. And that's why those three films in particular have standalone documentaries that we made, myself, Andrew Cash, and Buzz Wallach. Um, Part six, I helped out on. Michael Felsher was in charge of part six. I think I did the Malika Cod interview, the Paul Freeman interview, and the Daniel Harris interview um, because those all crossed over into other films I was working on. Um, So I just went and grabbed them for him while I was, while I had them, it doesn't make sense to have Daniel Harris show up four times for the four different movies she's been in. You know what I mean? So, so we helped each other on that because Michael and I are friends and we piggyback. So how he put his bit together, once I gave him the material, that was his decision, I guess, um, to not make it a standalone documentary. I guess that one would be more of a question for him as to why he did it that way. Michael Mercon- Mercante said, please do the Leprechaun films for St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, boy. <laughs> um, Those would be hard to get to. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I have that kind of patience. Although I've been meaning to revisit like the first one just for the hell of it because I haven't seen it forever. John, I want me good. I want me good. John Guthrie says, as two horror enthusiasts and metalheads, what are your thoughts on Slumber Party Massacre Part 2? I always thought the Driller Killer was a cool character with an iconic weapon to boot. Love watching these episodes. Keep up the great work. You know what? I've I've never seen it. You know what? I've never seen it. It's, uh, It's funny. 
as I was going through the movie. We're such horror enthusiasts. Yeah. <laughs> well, like we were talking about earlier, um, I'm trying to go through these movies I, for some reason that have eluded me. And the Slumber Party Massacre ones are ones that have eluded me. I recently started watching part one and got about 30 minutes into it and haven't gotten back to it. It wasn't doing much for me. But I've always loved that cover with that crazy red guitar with the drill, which somebody mm -hmm. recently acquired. A, a, a fellow collector has it. It's pretty badass. Um, mm, wow. But I, I, I actually want to see part two more than part one. So I'm trying to get through part one so I can get to part two. So when I do, I'll, I'll speak on it. I would like to see part two. Do you need to see part one to see part two? I thought they were like kind of a separate thing. No idea. All right. Got to see part one to be able to answer that question. <laughs> right. Sure. And part two. Uh, crate, crates of junior. I don't crates, crates of junior. I don't know. It's crates. It's all in one word. C R A T E S O F J R. Yeah. I guess crates of junior. I don't know. Great discussion guys. Um, <laughs> Sean shit talking. Part five had me dying. I was talking about Elm Street. I was caught off guard by this film when the babysitter took me to see it in the theaters when I was 10. What I thought it was going to be a fun time at the movies turned out to be one of my worst cinematic experiences to date. So I guess you agreed with me. Um, Pistol1783 said, this was really good, guys. I love the last 10 minutes when Piggy says everyone thinks there's a bigger and better Coke, taco, and nightmare movie when in fact there isn't. Hollywood should let some movies stay indie rather than Hollywooding them up. Couldn't agree more. That took me, that was really hard for me to read for some reason. It was. You got, that was tough for you. Matt Lucas says, Hey, Chris and Sean, I finally caught up on all your episodes. I love each and every one of them. I'm so glad you guys decided to do this. You're both hilarious and very entertaining. I have a few interview ideas for you guys as well. Myself being a few huge, a huge, I can't talk a huge Friday the 13th fanatic. I think Kane Hodder, Ari Lehman and Tom Morgan would be great to chat with. I think this might be the same guy that was on our live feed and I did. Yeah. Know. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> keep up the great content guys. And Chris, you do amazing work. I look forward to more of these shows and more Horrors Hall Grounds episodes. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Very nice of you. Hungry Wives says, Hungry. I mean, great episode and all, but God damn, please tell me I'm not going to have to watch that Nightmare on Elm Street remake again. Fuck. I'm going to have to watch that Nightmare on Elm Street remake again. God damn it. That's what he said. Wow. That is very angry. Well, dude, you don't have to watch it. I, I just happen to, to. I happen to really enjoy it the second time around. I'm sorry. Uh, Candace Janice said, Merry Christmas, firstly. Secondly, Chris, I almost bought the 2008 Halloween Myers figure when I showed it to my daughter. I told her you were the one who created that mask, put a huge smile on her face. Loving the Elm Street ranking, it's my favorite franchise since the first one <clears throat> was the first horror movie I ever saw. It was just released on VHS, and my older brother made me watch it when I was four. Yes, I have great brothers. All right, Candace. Thank you, Candace. Very, very, very good. Very good. Mike Wolf said, Love the ranking, fellas. Always a blast. You guys should rank the Wishmaster films. Way less than Amityville. Can you give a shout out to my bud Joe? He's a monster. A huge Sean Clark fan. Joe. Hey, Joe the monster. Hey, Betty. Gabriel Watts says, Hey, Sean. Always wanted to know about the original Nightmare on Elm Street sweater. Why in part one did the sweater have solid red sleeves and why did they only use that in part one? I always loved the original best atmosphere, best makeup on Freddy and the overall demeanor demeanor of Freddy was scary as hell. I know a lot of people like part two is the definitive look, but I always love the fresh oozing open blistered wounds with the burnt right ear. Just classic look of Freddy. Great show. Now I read this when I was putting these questions together and I never noticed that the sleeves were solid red in part one. Did you ever notice that? I, for whatever reason, I think I did, but it kept changing or something and which threw me off. 
it never did in part one. They're always solid red. And I never noticed it till this guy pointed it out. And I went and I looked. I went, holy shit. How did I never notice that? Huh. Never. Yeah. Interesting. I'll drop in a picture here. There it is. There it is. <clears throat> that um, is interesting. I do like that better. Actually. Yeah. Even though he didn't know. Uh, Joe Keir said, been watching since your guys' first episode, and they just keep getting better and better. I'm hoping the thing with two heads uh, picks up some serious momentum, and somehow, some ways, you guys end up starring in your own horror comedy based off the show. Well, now I think you're, I think you're reaching, my friend. Wow. But I like where you're going with it. <laughs> I do too. It's gonna be, it's gonna be like our own Holliston, I guess. Is that what that show's called? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Best part of 2020 has been listening to the two of you chat. Thank you both. Also, Tobias Forge on the show would be dope. Sean, have you heard he's working on a new album that's supposed to be coming out soon? I have heard that. I personally can't wait. Take it easy, fellas. Looking forward to the next episode. Chris, I was curious as to whether or not you had anything to do with the helping of the create the look of the Joker for Jared Leto. I personally enjoyed Leto's Joker. I felt his five minutes of scream time made the movie somewhat watchable. His performance could have been better in some spots, but his look is pretty dope. What were your thoughts? And are you guys interested in him returning to his role in Zack Schneider's Justice League? Wow. Uh... <laughs> um... I'm just going to step out for a minute. Uh... <laughs> As far as his look, I didn't execute the look, but I did consult with the look as far as how to do it um, and how to pull it off. Um, Alessandro did the actual makeup every day. There was more of him in the film that ended up in the film. We've talked about this, Suicide Squad. It's a very different film. David Ayer's cut is a, a version is a different movie. I'm hoping that they come out with that someday because it's different and I think is better and there's more of the joker in it and some neat stuff um that is weird uh again i always equated the david Ayer's version of it is more like a escape from new york meets fight club kind of kind of version comic book version of it i, I thought um and darker and cooler i did hear he might come back and they might cut him into the justice league or something i read a blurb or something I'll answer my part of that. Um, hated that makeup. Uh, I considered it the hot topic Joker. Um, really hated it. Uh, do not want to see him reappear in anything. Uh, let it go. Okay. But with that said, I'm actually a big fan of Jared. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually a big fan of him as an actor. Usually, I'm actually I I love right. the the first thirty seconds to Mars albums. I I think that first album's amazing. Um, I think he's extremely talented as a musician and an actor, but was not feeling that Joker. Um, Daniel Caruso. Hi, guys. Just another comment. I wanted to throw in a bit uh, when you asked if anyone remembered the Dotsons. I was just watching Halloween 2 the other night, and just before Lance Warlock walks into his dad carrying the boombox, you can see a Dotson parked in the parking lot there. Also remarking on the werewolf transformations. I love them both, but Eddie Quist's face before his jaw stretches was scarier than when he goes 100% werewolf. That grimace he did scared the shit out of me when I was a kid, but like you said, Sean, she could have been in the next county by the time he changed. Agreed. <laughs> That's an um, editing thing. That's not a, that's not, that's an editing thing. Get on, get over it. I do remember that I thought he was referring to the Dotson's band, the band no, Dotson's. I was talking about Dotson's, the car. Oh, Dotson's in one of the, the, in one of the previous episodes, I mentioned a Dotson okay. for some reason. And yeah. I said, does anybody remember Dotson's? I do. I do. Remember yeah. Dotson's. Cause we're old. Uh, Boogeyman Band. Yeah. This was this was a great closeout to the Nightmare Ranking. The remake and Freddy's Dead are my least favorites in the franchise. With re regards to the remake, I felt like they just put Jackie in Robert Englund's costume. Jackie is a brilliant actor, but he just didn't work for me in the role. 
I think to properly do a remake of Nightmare, you need to reinvent Freddy. Give him a different look and distance him as much as possible from the look and feel of Robert Englund. I have heard rumors of Robert championing the idea of Kevin Bacon playing Freddy. I'm curious what you both think of this idea. Happy holidays to you both and your families. Thank you for everything and best to you all in 2021. I think uh, Kevin Bacon would probably look cool uh, in a redo Freddy. However, I really think they need to go with an unknown. We, I don't want to think about who's under the makeup. Yeah, I 100% agree. I think Kevin Bacon would look cool. I don't think he's right for that role at all. Not even close. Yeah. Um, I agree. My thing with Jackie Earl Haley was, I, that's his name, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I liked him. My only issue with the makeup was, I wish they had pulled back so we saw more of him. More of Jackie Earl Haley. I think it would have worked better. Um, I think it was too disfigured. It's all for you, Demon. Well, all right. Hope you all had a great holiday. This ranking was great. Watching these makes me wish the studios would add these types of talk, especially using a thing with two heads to a box set release. Even when you guys rag on a film or give it the business, it's still fun. It still makes me want to go back and watch it and look look at it from a different perspective. I really dig these. Thank you for putting the time and effort to do these. Piggy D was a wonderful guest and his love for the franchise is infectious. Again, thank you for all that you do. Ooh. Best wishes in the new year. Take care and be safe. All yeah, right. giving it the business. The business. Todd Jara said, another great episode as usual, fellas. And a fun fact, the Alamo doesn't have a basement. It actually has two. One is underneath the gift shop that was dug out in the 80s, and the other is under Alamo Hall, which is used as a reception venue that they rent out for functions. I visited there during one of our trips to Alamo City Comic Con and was less concerned with all the artifacts, but was only nerd, nerd running around the grounds looking for the basement. I agree with Mr. Colin and think a Phantasm ranking would be most excellent. Keep them coming, guys, and have a safe and happy New Year's. Cheers. Mm -hmm. And speaking of Mr. Colin, Colin Murdy. Oh, is that a friend Colin Mark? Is he back with another Christian man? <laughs> ah, well, when Colin comes, he just shows up. He kind of shows up like a little bitty piece of space debris that comes down and it bumps you on your head. It bumps you on your head and you're just so happy about it. I just I just mailed something to Colin today. Colin, what did you mail to him? Got him some stickers. You want some stickers? And he, he also did, he also did you mail got, some stickers. He also got a a Nick Castle autograph photo. Ooh. Speaking of which, all of Why the do I sound like Mrs. Doubtfire, so... Yeah, I don't know what's <laughs> going on with you. Um, all of the people that won during our live stream raffle, every everything has been mailed. Except for one person hasn't re hasn't got to me, um, uh, David Nangle the third. If you're out there, David Nangle, there's a Bill and Ted's uh, Excellent Adventure autographed photo waiting for you. So obviously he doesn't want. It. If he doesn't want it, you know it's going to end up like that pumpkin. Some lucky lucky person's going to get it. By the way, talk about service. Okay, the guy who won the pumpkin. With the Intel yeah. Wild, and his name was uh, uh, John Cock and Toast, and his middle name is James. Um, James, I actually talk about service. I hand delivered his his uh, his merchandise to him because he won the pumpkin. He got a signed Nick personalized Nick photo, and he also mm -hmm. got because he bought a lot of raffle tickets. He got Does he live else. in the area? Oh, the Terminator ones as well. Um, he lives in Norwalk. And when he sent me his address, I, I said, you know, I'm driving through Norwalk on my way to and from Nick's house. I looked up his address. It was literally right off the freeway. So I was like, dude, I'll just drop it off to you. So I, I, he wasn't home. He told me to leave it on the porch. So I, I swung by. 
and talk about service. What other talk podcast does that? Who does that? They don't do that. Chris Nelson won't do that. I wouldn't be. I won't do that. No, no fucking way. I come to your house. No, no way. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to Colin Murdy. We were talking about his name so much and going, oh, and all lucky charms and all that. We forgot his question. Merry Christmas to you. Well, what can I say? Yet again, another top-notch episode with your guest, Piggy D. Seems like such a great guy. I enjoyed both parts so much covering the Elm Street rankings. Some interesting choices you guys made that landed quite high up on your lists, which I was surprised at. It was really fun hearing all your reasoning, all your reasonings as to why your choices were made. Once again, I was chewing the carpet with laughter when Chris was doing his uh, Scottish accent. Fucking cracks me up every time. Also, love Sean's Reggie Bannister impersonation. Sounded just li- just like him. Well, you know, thanks, you know, because I, I try, you know, the Reg man, you know, hot as love, you know, gets hard on the road. Um, it's not that see. far away. That's not that far away from your Trump impression. It's quite close. Wait, excuse, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Okay, uh, the Trump impersonation totally, totally far superior. Everybody knows it. Everybody's been telling me all the best people know it. It's true. Better impersonation. Spot on. Thank you. Excuse me. Um, Let's see. Uh, This episode made my week, guys. I hope someday you can get Barbara Crampton on the show. Love that lady. Uh, Promise to get a self-addressed stamped envelope over soon. Well, that's already been done and done because he didn't have to do that because I actually sent it to him because he got something else. So. Boom, he's handled. It's en route, my friend. Uh, I doubt you'll have it by the time this airs because it's going all over to friggin' Ireland. So it's going to be a while probably. He's, oh, he says, I need a shirt too. Hope you both had a great Christmas with your family. Stay safe, guys. Oh, Barbara Crampton. Yeah, I've already talked to her. She is coming on the show. Gabriel R. Johnson the third. Hey, Chris and Sean. I wanted to ask, did either of you ever see... Return of the Living Dead at a theater or drive in when it first came out in 85. And did you like the aspect of Dan O'Banion did with the zombies having them run, talk, and being unkillable? Also, well, they were killable. You, you, you could kill them. Have you or Chris ever met Don Kalfa, James Karen, and Dan O'Banion before they passed away? It would be so cool to get Tom Matthews on a thing with two heads. He's a friend. I could get Tom. Keep up the great work, Chris and Sean. Yes, I saw it in the theater when it came out. Uh, I think the uh, Cypress Twin is where I saw it, I believe. I've met Don Kalfa, James Karen, and Dan O'Banion. I met all of them. Yes. Chris? I haven't met any of them. Yes, I did see it in the theater the, the night it came out, and I loved it. I thought it was great. I still love it to this day. It's, uh, it was so fun. Yeah. And so weird and such an EC comic type of vibe and and um yeah I love I love that movie. I could go on about that movie a lot. The only thing I think I didn't like was the zombies talking. Um I mean I yeah I, yeah I mean I like yeah. I mean I like the brains that's kind of but but when yeah. like the part I didn't like was the send more paramedics Oh, I don't like that part either. That's the yeah. only part. Like, I like the green zombie on the on the on the embalming table going, yeah. you know, brains. Like, I thought that was great because yeah. it's again very EC comics. I di- I think, yeah, the only part I didn't like was that one going send more paramedics. Like, I thought yeah. that was like, eh, kind yeah. of stupid. But, uh, but I but I loved I loved it. And I loved everybody in it. I think it's just so great. And what's his name, Bird? You know that who's that guy? What's his name again? Um, Don, uh, James Karen. Yeah, he yeah. murders me in that movie. Murders me. Yeah. I laugh every time I see it. I can't stop laughing at that guy. His acting and reaction, mostly his reaction. Like when he's going. It's not even when he's. Not, he's making yeah, the faces. It's his reactions. It's not yeah. his face and his little things that he says in the background and off to the side, like. It's so comedic genius. It's amazing. I love it. Clue Gulliger is great in it too. I mean, because he's playing it pretty straight. He is great in it. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I also 
I don't know if her performance is intentional or not, but Linnea Quigley's like her her weird the way she does it, you know, the way yeah. she says her lines, like, you know, when they see the cemetery, oh, let's do that. You know, yeah, it's just I use you know. that. I use that all the time. I always go, oh, let's do that. <laughs> and when yeah. she goes, do you have a fantasize about being <laughs> murdered? Being murdered. <laughs> oh, let's do that. Yeah. I love that. Um, yeah, great movie. Great movie. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Speaking of casting, I don't know why. Before I forget, sorry not to go on a sidetrack. Did you hear that fucking Nicole Kidman is going to be playing Lucille Ball? Yeah, that makes They're no doing a sense. Lucille Ball, Lucille Ball, um, Ricky Ricardo movie. Yeah, that and makes no Javi, sense. Javier Bardem is playing Ricky Ricardo and or, or Desi Arnaz, and Nicole Kidman is playing Lucille Ball. That that is the worst casting. I, they're both so that's pissed. both terrible that's both awful they're both terrible they're both terrible because i'm a huge lucille ball fan i love lucille ball I think and actually is. i like both those actors but not for that role yeah. not for and oh. those are both miscast terrible terrible it's gonna be awful anyway go ahead. Moving. yeah i i was shocked <laughs> when i saw that um rhyme rhyme and reasoning said track down rob botin if he wants to be tracked down, that is. Maybe he wants to be left alone. I was watching an interview with Robert Freddy Krueger England. Robert was talking about when he worked on the movie Dead and Buried. Stan Winston worked on this movie, and what a good movie it is. Robert was mentioning Stan and said that Stan had this big bearded guy working with him, and that, that guy was really amazing at his work. Robert could not remember the guy's name, but when he said big and bearded, I knew instantly he was talking to the awesomely talented Rob Bottin. I love Dead and Buried. That's an underrated film. I don't know if he... I don't think Rob Bottin ever worked for Stan Winston. Mm -hmm. Did Rob he work on Dead and Buried? Him, uh, let, let me I see. Think so. IMDb yeah. doesn't lie, ever. <laughs> At that time, there were a lot of big bearded effects guys. It was the standard look back at that time <laughs> for That's effects true. makeup guys. That so, is true. You know, could have been it could have been Chris Biggs. Could have been could have been a lot of people. Could have been Chaz Balin. Could have been. Oh he didn't do effects, but why is it? Could have been not? Sidney Applebaum. Or John Cotton Toasting. Well looking at his IMDB, there's no listing for dead and buried. So yeah. it may not have been Rob Botin, but thank you. For the comment, regardless, um, yeah, David... I, I don't think Rob. Uh, I don't think. And also, to answer your your query, I don't think Rob wants to be found. Rob is nowhere to be found. If he wanted to be on the radar, he would still be on the radar because too many people are looking for him. So he's going out of his way to not be on the radar. <laughs> David Schoonover said, "I was wondering if Chris could share on how." He was cast in Kill Bill. For, forgive me if this has been asked already. Only caught the mention about Carradine liking his hair. Uh, would love to see Sean do a Horse Hog Grounds on the early Tarantino film someday. Um, Sean is the absolute gold standard for location videos. He certainly deserves far more credit. Oh. I love this guy already. David, I love you. Thank you for all your hard work keeping us entertained, fellas. Sit, stay safe. So how did you how did you get cast? And I don't know. Didn't I tell this story on this you, show? You may have. Times? You may have, but he's too lazy to watch the earlier episodes. Apparently, I'll make. I'll do the cliff note version. Cliff note version. Cliff note version was I I was I was I got the job to work on Kill Bill. I was on the plane flying to Beijing to start <laughs> shooting Kill Bill. I was reading the script. Came across that role of Tommy. At that time was diving into acting and taking acting classes and stuff. Read that role and went, I could do that role. That sounds like a good role for me. And then forgot about it. Got to Beijing, shot four months in Beijing, um, and then came back to LA. During the break, we're figuring out what to, uh, we're figuring out all the effects for all the characters coming up in the next block of shooting. 
we had a meeting with Quentin, um, and that that role was coming up that effect because he gets his head blown off in the movie, or at least he was at that time. And uh, I said, "Who's that going to be?" Because we need the life cast, whoever it is. And Quentin said, "I don't know. I'm having a casting session this Friday for it." And um, I went, "Well, I'll do it." And Quentin went, "What?" And Greg Nicotero, who was sitting right next to me, goes, "Yeah, Chris is an actor. You should audition him. He's, he's, you know, he he can do it." And Quentin looked at me and he kind of goes, "Yeah, you look like you could be the guy." He goes, "But, but, he, but," he said, "But you have to audition because the role. It's, I can't just give you the role. It's too big of a role. You have to audition." And I said, "I'd be thrilled with just an audition." And so uh, he said, "All right, this Friday, three o'clock." So I went that Friday, nervous as fuck, auditioned at three o'clock. He wasn't there, did it on tape. And then um, he read a lot of people. They were like, he read Jason Bateman for that role. He read Danny Bonaduce for that role, I believe. He read, there's a lot of people he read. I think he, he was considering me to knock at one point. And a, a bunch of people, but anyway. So he was auditioning. auditioning a bunch of short people. <laughs> All three of those guys are short. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's true. Uh, what well, Ethan Hawke was married to Uma at that time. Oh, was he? Okay. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. So, they, um, I know they had what, done Gattaca. Yeah, they did yeah. Gattaca together, didn't they? Was it in Gattaca? Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. So um, a couple weeks later, we were on set, and I got called to bring blood to set, but he really didn't need blood. Quentin was like, "I saw your audition." Um, I thought it was really good. Um, I was really surprised. You're, it's down to four guys, and you're one of the guys. And then he kept doing that to me every day consecutively for the next two, three days. And then he called me to set one day and told me I had the role and uh, that I earned it. And that was really cool. And then a week later, I was on set acting. Out in the in beautiful church, Lancaster. Which, out in beautiful Lancaster, and I was nervous as hell. And, and David Carradine came up to me, and right before my first take, and looked at me and said, don't fuck this up. <laughs> wow, I'd hate to hear the real version of that story if that's the Cliff Notes version. Oh wow, okay. <laughs> the real the, the the real version is better actually because I do impressions and there's uh, some actually really fun, cool stuff that went down. But I'm uh, not going to do it. And he actually has marionettes he uses and everything. But since this is the Cliff Notes version, um, I do. Uh, Very I I haven't seen that movie. Since you and I have become friends, I haven't revisited that film. I don't recall you having lines. You have lines in that movie? Were there lines? Oh, yeah, I have lots of lines. Do you? Yeah. Huh. It's been a long time since I've seen it. It's the beginning of part two, Kill Bill Volume 2. I'm terrible in it. Oh, I'm awful. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I have lots of lines. Okay. I don't, I, it's like I said, I don't think I've seen so, it. Since. <laughs> Okay. It was a very memorable performance. Um, all right, so we're down to the last Obviously, question. I love, I love my support from my friends, Sean. It's awesome. I have totally, yeah. I have 110 percent supported you not acting again. What are you talking about? That's um, right. <laughs> uh, uh, this is our final question. Sweet. Hey, I was pretty good in, in Halloween 2018. You actually and really Bob, were. That was. You really were. You were, and I told you that right after the premiere. I walked up to you with my head in my hands and my tail between my legs, and I said, "Dude, okay, you're actually pretty good." Um, Lucas K said, "This question is for Sean and Christopher. I've noticed oh. that you guys are not big fans of horror franchises." And seem to find most of the later entries to be ghoulish or goulash. He put ghoulish, but I think he meant goulash. Goulash. He put ghoulish. Um, I can definitely agree with that. That being said, are there any franchise in horror or outside of the genre that you are a big fan of, where you like a majority of the series, if not all of them? That's an interesting question. Uh, say that again what was the question what, what he's asking is there are there any franchises where we like all the movies where we like we think they're all good um and that they're not goulash in 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 uh, any genre in horror in any genre any genre yeah 
Um, well, so far I like Deadpool, even though it's only two movies. I liked both the Deadpool movies. I thought they were fun. Uh, I'm looking great. at my looking at um, looking on my shelf here. Uh, it seems like so really. Good. You know what? I I think I like all the Evil Dead films. You know. Uh, including Army of Darkness and the remake, I, 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 I obviously some are better than others, but I enjoy all four of them. I would say the Vacation movies, but the but the Vegas one is so awful. I kind of enjoy the Vegas one. Out. How how could you really? do that? To, you said you were a big Ethan Embry fan. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was going to have him on the show. Now he's not coming. Um, let's see. Uh. God damn. I'm I, I keep looking at um, some and I go, oh oh no, that third one was bad. That it's it keeps happening. Yeah. Um I like my bloody yeah. Valentine and the remake, even though there's they're not sequels. I thought both of those were pretty good. Um Well, you know, I gotta say the Alien franchise except for I liked part three. I liked David Fincher's version. I thought you liked really part good. four? Part four was which one? Was, was that uh, Resurrection? Was it called? Is it? It's it's the one with Winona Ryder. Um, oh, is that is that part four? Resurrection? Yeah. Was it Resurrection? Is that the name? Yeah, that that one's kind of goofy. Isn't it? Where yeah, Sigourney Weaver's stuff. playing basketball? Yeah, that one's bad. Never mind. Yeah, just, that. just stop talking. Wow, that's tough. I know. I know. It's, oh, you know what? I like the. Uh, I will say this. I enjoy uh, the Bourne series, the Jason Bourne series. Even uh, the films. one without. I thought all those yeah, were. Even the one without uh, Matt. Matt. Uh, I, I wasn't crazy about it. I wasn't crazy about that one, but it's not a bad film. What's his name? Hawkeye. I, what's, uh, uh, Jeremy Renner. Yeah, I thought the one, what's what's the dude's name? Uh, Matt Damon. I th- I like the Matt Damon ones. Yeah. They're all solid movies. Um, um, the, I like all the John Wick movies. There's a franchise I like. The first one's the best one. The yeah. first one, you can't beat the first one. Blade Runner, yeah. Nay just yelled Blade, Blade Runner. Runner. I liked both of those. Blade Runner. I do too. Yep, I'll take that one. Uh, I wish... Yeah, I was sitting there thinking about the Hannibal Lecter films, but then there was that one no. Hannibal Rising, which was really bad. Um, I actually enjoy all the Final Destinations, except for the three D one was really bad. I mean, mm. they're they're just fun, st- you know. I think all the Psycho movies are fun. I, I don't all the I... oh no, I can't say this anymore. I was going to say all the. The dead films, but then I forgot about survival and diary and never mind. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> the original trilogy. Uh, yeah, the original trilogy is great. That's a good question. Maybe uh, uh, somebody out there can come up with a, a solid, solid franchise uh, where every movie is good. I guess the Bond movie, the Bond movies are all pretty there's, fun. There's some bad ones. Not in there. all great, but. Yeah, it seems like every franchise has a misstep. I love all the Monty Python films, if you want to call that a franchise. I love yeah. Holy Grail, Meaning of Life, and Life of Brian. I like all three yeah. of those. I think they're all great. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, you know, there's that. What about the Batman franchise? You weren't crazy about Joel Schumacher's Batman, Batman oh. Forever, Batman... <laughs> Batman and Robin and Batman Forever are both terrible. I did like Christopher Nolan's Batman. Movies. Yeah, yeah, I did. Those are good. I like those. those I good. actually like all I like the Batman them. movies yeah. except for the those two. Um, yeah. Are you at all excited for the new one, Rob Robert Patterson? Um, I don't know if excited Pattinson. is the word. Pattinson. I definitely. Robert Pattinson. I, I, I wouldn't say I'm excited. I will definitely. Are you fired see up. It. You fired up? I wouldn't say I'm fired up. Fire it up. Fire it up. Fire it up. You, the Crow franchise. Those are all great. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. That's... Um, yeah. It's a good question. 
It is. It's a good question. I like these questions that make you start thinking. I mean, we've been talking about this sure. question for like 15 minutes. Um, I know. The Rambo, oh, yeah. all the Rambo films, except for that last one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? Oh, no. I was going to say Indiana Jones, but nope. The Strangers. That one. The Strangers that Part 1 that. and 2 were both were both good. I actually thought the second one was better. Did you see The Strangers 2? Pray at Night, yes. I think it's called. No. It's actually really good. It's actually a really good really? like little like like slasher type film. Really s- surprised me. Um I had heard mm. it was good and I, I was Do I have to see the first one to see the second one? No. You really don't. I mean uh the, the first I mean the first one is very bleak, very bleak. Like it, it really yeah. made, I left the theater feeling really just like, ah, oh, wow. That was like, yeah. So bleak. Um, but the second right. one was fun. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. Check it out. See what you think. I liked all okay. the Omen, all the all right. Omen movies, except for then they did that TV one awakening, which was terrible. That doesn't count. And I will they, give you that. But I'll then give the, you the first, the, the three Omen movies. But then there's the remake too. I don't count that. You got to. So it's too bad. You have to. No, no, oh, both, I don't. It's a both remake. American Werewolf and London films are fantastic. American Werewolf oh. in Paris. <laughs> Far superior effects. Um. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. All right. So, well, we should probably get into our our surprise guest. <laughs> Who's our surprise guest? Our surprise guest is Robbie Kiger. And oh, here, sorry, do that again. And and Robbie Kiger. Robbie Kiger? No, you're you're out of sync with me. That's a problem. Um, That's so actually, funny. so yeah, here's our surprise guest. It, and you're really gonna enjoy he or she. Here it comes. Right now, here, they come. here comes the right person. <laughs> here comes, enjoy the human being. <laughs> hey guys, how you doing? Want to interject here real quick to explain this interview you're about to see because it's a little bit different than what we're used to. So we were supposed to have Tom Atkins on this week, but due to a technical issue that got postponed, so he'll be on the next episode. But in the meantime, I happened to be doing a private signing with the client, Robbie Kiger from Children of the Corn and the Monster Squad. And to my knowledge, he hasn't done an interview in ever. I don't know. I mean, I can't find any interviews with him anywhere. And he's kind of fallen off the map for about 30 years, with the exception of a convention I booked him into, I don't know, seven, eight years ago. I don't remember when it was. Anyhow, he was doing a private signing with an autograph dealer. I was there and I said, what the hell? Why don't I just... uh, do the interview right here. So I posted real quick on Facebook. If anybody want to ask questions, I answered a few of them. He told a lot of stories. It's a real fun interview, very candid, very open. And uh, let's be respectful to your comments. Um, he hasn't done anything in a long time. And it was real brave of him to come out and actually say a lot of the stuff he did publicly. And uh, he's a great guy. And, you know, I hope you enjoy the interview. All right, guys, here we go. Yeah, I I just feel so fortunate to do a two horror genre that that really hit, you know. Um, I I didn't know they would. They both didn't hit in the theater, you know, so I didn't become a star. Mm -hmm. And that's a bummer because I was a working child actor. I I, I would like to be a star, and I didn't want to be back then. When I think about it now, I didn't want to be a normal kid. What the hell was I thinking? I could still play Little League and be a star, you know? Mm -hmm. But back then, there was no paparazzi. Back then, there was... Go ahead. Uh, Your name, Ann Patrick. I don't like your tone of your attitude, young lady. That's fine. That's (laughs) fine. I go on. (laughs) Look at the stack. Where's the stack? So, I mean, bottom line... Look at all the stuff he's got to sign over here. No, the stack of money, dude. Come on. Oh, that's over there. And Patrick, yeah. It's a monster squad. This is awesome stuff, man. Yeah, that's a good thing. We get people to send stuff from all over. So this is not everybody. Else. I was in shock when I was in Maui, and, and they, they contacted my dad, and they said, uh, we want to do an anniversary issue of Monster Squad. And I said, really? You know, you guys, it, 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 it's hard to... It's hard to get a grip on that when people are renting them at a, at a store. Mm-hmm. We don't know, you know what I mean? Your name and joke. I should tell you about Killing the Corn, Stephen King. That was fun. That was uh, six weeks in Sioux City, Iowa. Linda Hamilton was so pretty. I think it was right before Terminator hit. 
Remember you introduced me to her in Indianapolis? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I went back to her room that later that, and I'm just. <laughs> 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 Sorry, bro. Nobody's gonna believe that they told me. Your name, Patrick here. Even though everybody else is this way. Yep, that's what he's asked for. <sighs> Can I put your dump? Okay, no. my name, Rob, <laughs> Robbie Kiger. Yep. That's kind of the standard, huh? Okay. Yeah, it is. And then Patrick over here. Okay. On the side. Really? Yeah. Okay. They get quite specific sometimes. Yeah. Uh, That's good. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, we met Stephen King the second day of filming in, in, in Iowa for Children of the Corn, and they did the big bomb scene. You know how when they film movies, they go out of order? Mm -hmm. They did the big bomb scene that day, and I was right next to King for the bomb. And, I mean, he just looked and then just walked away. And what I got pissed about him, I didn't know he was this big... Go ahead. Your name and then Job. So I didn't know he was this big writer or the main reason the whole movie was there. And I was pissed because we were, we were, we were waiting for the food truck. Job. And he's... Oh, shit. That's fine. I put... I'm fired. Okay, watch this. Turn that into a Job. That Perfect. sucks. No, no, you're fine. So, um... So he, he cut in front of 60 people waiting to eat. I'm like, Mom, who's this guy? You know, we got up to the front, but why does he get... <laughs> She's like, don't worry about it, honey. Uh, your name, Job. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, I Wish Isaac never... Isaac. Keep saying Job right now. Job, okay? yeah. Because when I did turn 18 and I got all that acting money, uh, I didn't make the greatest decisions <laughs> at that moment. I, nitrous was fun, so my... All right, Job. Yeah. And so, yeah. And then I Wish Isaac never came here. One day, my mom says, um, you're going to go model. And I said, Mom, I don't model. You know, what, what are you talking about? Okay. And so, you want me to put that in quotes, no? Okay, so no, bottom no, line not. is like, I went and stood like this for three hours. No, an hour and a half. I don't know how long. But I was crying. You know, I was sad. I was like, Mom, and there's a guy painting. And I meet a nice guy named Steven and George and all these people, you know. And it turns out, later they sent me a 200 bucks or gave me 200 but I don't remember how this... Thank you. You're, you. This is for the cover of a movie called E.T. the Extraterrestrial. With the alien and the human... The painting of my hand, dude. That's awesome. Isn't that cool? Just squeeze your name in there. Nothing else. Just your name. Okay. Okay. Wait, what's that painting in your hand? What do you mean? The E.T. alien hand and the, the human hand. The cover of E.T. Yeah. That's... I stood there and modeled for no it. Way. Yeah, for There's hours. Dude, I was crying. I was pissed. Dude, what the hell am I doing this for? There was no <laughs> alien. Man. No, you know, they don't do both sides. I never I, heard that story. Well, I never told it, bro. I, 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 see, here's the thing. Your name I stay and Patrick. So back to There's a theme well. here, huh? I know. So, so, so now you're going to have a bunch of E.T. stuff. Getting yeah. Sent. See, so, <laughs> so, so what happened? This is crazy, but yeah, let's get it. Hey, that was a big movie. And so I know, but I wish I was Henry Thomas, bro. So listen. <laughs> so, um. My agency was Herb Tannen, literally, like uh, a smaller one. They had dogs and pets, and like I was the one killing it. But I remember this little agency called Creative Artists wanted me, and I, whatever, I didn't want to go with those. Mm -hmm. And so this lady, Australian lady named Kali Vidal, was my rep or whatever. That your name and Patrick. And I'd say from 82 to 86, maybe, I was just like the Hollywood hit kid. You know what I mean? But I never hit that big role. I remember five tryouts for Goonies. Six for Lost Boys. You know, me and me and Will Wheaton or me and, uh, 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 what's the kid's name that got Goonies lead role? Corey. Sean Astin. Corey. Sean Astin. Yeah, me and Astin. And I had done a movie with his mom, uh, Patty Duke, called uh, Women's Room. So I remember that last day, me and River Phoenix in one too, the one where he's a Russian and the black guy, Sidney Poitier or something. Yeah, Little Nikita, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, those three, I remember going back and interviews, 6, 15 p.m., 8.30, you know, they were deciding, and I didn't hit on Goonies, Lost Boys, and and uh, Stand By Me. Wow. Any one of those three, I'm a star. So your name is Patrick. But I live in a van down by the river. <laughs> Actually, the ocean looks pretty nice today. Yeah, right? but they're kicking me out next week. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I so, so literally, like, I was trying to, like, not be an actor, and everybody around me is like, you know, I'm um, trying to be an actor, and I just, I'd go into these interviews, and I'd say, so what's your movie about? You know, get them talking. And instead of, like, um, the dog went to the store, I'd be like, you know, pretend it's real. Mm -hmm. You know, the dog went to the store, you know, whatever Your name and Patrick. This is awesome. This is the last day of filming, you know why? You know you could tell? Because my hair was cut. Wait, wait, just joke? No, your name. Okay, okay. So, this is the last day of filming, the rest of the, Robbie, the rest of the filming, I had long hair, you know? And, uh. This is awesome to do. So, um, what was I going to say? So, I was trying to get, like, kind of away from acting, which was the worst call I've ever made in my life. <laughs> so, so, um, what was I going to say? Why did you just, get out of acting? Just your name. I just, I don't know. I, I, it was 
like, I just wanted to go to have normal friends. You know, I was always the one kid on the sit beside the monster squad, usually. And um, I tell you too, Sean, it, it led to a lot of the problems that I've had as an adult, relating to other people, not being the boss. I didn't have that teacher saying no. I was Your paying the mortgage at 10. And Job. And so, you know, I didn't have the huge high that some did and the huge fall with the heroin. I was just kind of like a working child actor that, you know, I, I remember trying to get back into it in the mid-90s. Mm -hmm. And my agency, Herb Cannon, folded, right? And I remember going like, okay, Collie's back in Australia. My, my agent is now a painter. <clears throat> and I go to the lot, of the, 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 the building where it was on Gower, and it's a freaking empty lot. You know what I'm saying? Wow. I was like, dude, uh, the forces are against Just me. your name. Robbie Tiger? Yep. And so, yeah, I was, I was like, oh, wow. And I tried a little bit, but I wasn't a cute little kid anymore. You know, so it was, it was, a, little, it was a lot more competition, and I just, I don't know. I mean, uh, when I look back on it, horrible call. But it's what I did at the time. It seemed like the right just call Just your at the time. name? And you know what happens? My mom stopped taking me on interviews. It was up to me now. I had a car. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, I just met this cute girl, and they might want to go hang out and drink or whatever, smoke, uh, whatever. And bottom line is, like, instead of driving to Carlsbad and uh, all over L.A., I just didn't for just a couple your weeks. Name, huh? and, it, and it, you know, ended up being, you know, a regular guy, child star, adult failure, whatever you want to call it. Like, it's humbling, but... I mean, you know, I, I, I don't know what to say besides... Um, Your name and Patrick on this one. I, I wish I could do things differently, but I mean, I did... And Patrick. I was, I was for... Please. You have great eyes. You <laughs> Thank know you. Are they real? Yes. Okay, good. So, I mean, I, I just... Uh, I just move forward. I don't think about things like that. But I mean, whenever I tell somebody, which is every 15 minutes, I'm just... They say, what happened? And I just run away, bro. It's funny. But, um, yeah, I just... Uh, I haven't done anything since Winona Ryder in 1990. Uh, Welcome Home, Roxy Carmichael. Yeah. That was a real winner. That was fun, too, though. Uh, I remember the first Just day your name? we were going up to Santa Paula, it's north of LA, and to look at some locations. And me and Winona had the back of the van, and I was making her laugh. She was a little older than me. But um, I was like, maybe I have a chance with this one. And then the next day, or a couple of days later, I meet her boyfriend, Johnny Depp, you know, and I'm like, Johnny and Jesse, oh, okay. There's no chance, you know, but she was a really cool girl. Yeah, but she was cool. Like, he had, like, tattoos. Every, uh, like, and this is, like, before he became anything, you know? Mm -hmm. But he was a man. Yeah, I remember that. That was a good time. So how did you get involved in Monster Squad? Do you remember? Monster Squad? Yeah. Um, I mean, I heard a story from a very big fan named Joe that said that Andre got to pick the co-star. And he went, it was me and, uh, what's the Austin Powers, Redhead? Scott, um, Pam guy, Grimes, Grimes, yeah, yeah. Grimes. Me and Bruce Grimes, and, and so Andre knew me of me, so he took Grimes to the mall. Oh wait, 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 not Scott. Not not Scott Grimes. No, Scott. Scott Seth Green. Seth, Seth Green. Green. Seth, Seth Green. Green. Seth Green. Yeah. Seth Green. Sorry about that, Scott. Yeah. How? Where are you? Scott. Scott? Well, they're both redheads. Yeah, and I know. They're both, but, and but they're both short. One, yeah. So. Your name is Patrick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm covering it. No, so no, yeah, no, um, so I mean, I don't know if that story's true. I've never heard of a lead role getting to pick his teammates like that. Especially one that, well, I don't want to... Fred would but, know. But I got double. <laughs> yeah. Because I rejected it. I rejected the role. Hmm. I don't know why. I think it was like summer camp. I mean, I really don't know why. But they are double them. We're like, okay. You know, 50,000, nothing. 100? Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, I, and, and I think I was written out of Monster Squad at the end. I wanted to go to summer camp. But I remember uh, going to England for the series I was in called Crazy Like a Fox. Uh -huh. I know Fred had mentioned that on set you improvised constantly and it, it? and it kind of made him crazy he did <laughs> i didn't uh, dude i i i did uh i did ron howard's directorial debut after happy days it was called little shots he wanted to do a play on the old little rascals uh -huh. and it was modern day joey lawrence is in it punky brewster then now now here's the thing about mantra squad and now i'll get it back to fred in a little while but back here party so i was doing ron howard's directorial debut and i remember a scene with me and joey and, I, and the line was, if he catches us. And I said, if, 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 if. I said it like eight times, you know. And, and Ron's like, do you know the lines there, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> but it was Anson Williams and Ron Howard, you know, and they were doing their um, rubber just, tiger. Yeah, just rubber tiger. And uh, it, it never went anywhere. Jeff Cohen, uh, fat, fat kid. Mm -hmm. uh, fat, chunk, Chunk was in it. Punky Brewster, Soleil Mephra. Yeah, it was a pilot that didn't get picked up. But uh, that was cool. Um, with Monster Squad, here, here's what I need to tell Andre. Mm -hmm. And Ryan and whoever. Um, for real. I'm sorry. Okay? Because there was a party at Ron Drake's house afterwards. And I was 16, starting high school. 
Uh, the Tiger Tucani. 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 And so um, I didn't have a ride for my sister or mom. Didn't I start the story? Okay, and so basically... Robbie Tiger, and, Robbie Tiger and, Joe. and so Andre's having a party. I, I think it was Monster Scar related, but basically my sister wouldn't take me. And so um, I went with my high school friends because my car, I don't know what was going on with that. But when I got there, it was like I was trying to bring two or three of my high school friends in and it didn't happen. They didn't, it was invite only. And I wasn't aware of that. It was across, LA, uh, across the San Fernando Valley. To Kenny, your name. And so it was Granada Hills and I'm from Encino. And so... Uh, like, uh, once I found out my friends were rejected, I didn't have a ride back to the casino. So instead of going to this party, I went with my new friends from high school, you know. And, and so I get in the car, and I'm kind of bummed that they can't go in. But, but bottom line is, I was in the back seat. And what they did is peel out and cuss, yeah. And I'm sitting there going, well, no, I didn't want that, you know. <laughs> like, I just didn't choose to go. But, like, they got rejected at the door kind of thing, you know. And it was, like, homely. But I got to go in for a minute, and then we brought Soleil out. But Andre didn't been. know. Like, I didn't want that, Andre. And I'm sorry about that. Okay. So I don't know if that's the reason why I haven't been as involved with this as 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 as, as I could have been or you want me to be, but I I just want you to know I didn't want it to go like that. And I don't think we've talked since. So Robbie Tiger. Your name is Patrick. So I mean, literally he tells people that our moms were friends, but what does that mean, Andre? It means we weren't, right? And I, I like to think we were, but oh I screwed up. That's but I mean bottom line is I, I did not oh, I did not want it to, to go that way, and it did. It kind of went sideways on me. I didn't know they'd do that in the end, but um, I'm, I'm truly sorry, okay, Andre? Like, um, and I want to be a part of this however I can, however you see fit. It was your boat. I was on it, okay? So let me know, okay? Thank you, Andre. I feel better right now. Good. Can I go shower? <laughs> <laughs> look at this dish. I'm going to oh, run out with this one. one. That is You're a on this one. That one's awesome. Dude, look at my hair, dude. I had great Don Johnson hair, dude. What <laughs> happened, dude? No, look, dude. Look, guys, look. <laughs> Okay, so cameras followed my zaniness around town. Like, they were, it's pretty funny what's happening. Like, mm -hmm. I just crazy. <laughs> no, I, I, cause there's no filter with me. You know, like, I mean, I don't know how to describe it. I, if I see somebody with a mental, I mean, with a physical deformity, within two minutes we're gonna be talking about how it is to live with that. <laughs> no, it's horrible, bro. Gets me in some room, but I mean, I don't have a pink elephant in the room. I bring that bugger right out. So I mean, it's good and it's bad, you know. And I usually make fun of myself. I just, uh, one buddy said, you know, I know the cameras have been off since 1989, but they it, they should be. And I thought about, we should do some sort of, you know how they show these four stars and these actors that came from nothing and went to the big show? Well, we're going to do the opposite way. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. They never show that one, right? Where the dude's just kind of a regular guy, but he started out. <laughs> so, um, Kirk Cameron and uh, Alyssa Milano came the last day of filming when we we're doing the big stunts mm -hmm. and i love dudes of us and i didn't know uh, and i didn't know that kirk cameron and her were going out there holding hands and i don't think anybody else in the cast saw it like i was hanging out with michael faustino who's the little kid yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah his big brother was david faustino right before uh married with children married with children at 87 right i think it hit 88 and so he wasn't a star yet and i took him and me and him uh, same again, your name. And so me and him went to like the prop truck and I was showing him all the stuff, you know, and he wasn't a star, you know, he was kind of like, and so I took him in and he's a cool guy. I mean, he's like four foot nine, but he, he's, he's real, he, he really likes to uh, partake, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh, but he's a nice guy. But um, yeah, his brother and his mom were great. And I remember me and, me and David were eating the dinner that night and it's in a famous house that's in a lot of shows, right? Right across from that circle, which I thought they filmed Back to the Future at that with the lightning bolt, you oh, know. Yeah, yeah. That, but it, no, it's a different lot. And this one was on the Burbank Studios. I think it's Warner yeah, Brothers now. Oh, you mean where the big finale happened? Yeah, yeah. yeah but I a, thought that's, that's the same place as Back to the Future, and it turns out it is. And I no. think there's a lot of Paramount or something. Well, you know, the the church you guys are in front of was the same church in Lost Boys where they ran in and got. The oh, Holy really? Water. Okay, yeah. but that's on a big circle. Oh, yeah, sorry. yeah. That's assault. I know. Only to your hat, though. Okay. <laughs> Your name, and Patrick. And so, yeah, yeah. So, Kirk Cameron and Alyssa Milano were holding hands, and I just remember being so jealous and mad, bro. Like, I just loved that before Kirk decided to become a preacher, yeah? So, he's kind of like the same story as me. You know what I mean? I don't know. Where is he now? Oh, Kirk Cameron. I heard he got caught making meth or something. I'm just kidding. No, he's, he's a preacher, right? He's making all kinds of crazy Jesus Yeah, yeah, you know, that's, that's what happened. Yeah, yeah, so he's kind of like me. He got out of the limelight, but... But, um, Same again. Your name is Patrick. But um, yeah, and so uh, they they were all there because they were on the on the uh, lot, and they heard about this last you know scene, which is, which was cool. Like it, it didn't get shown in the final, but like anybody that was by the jeep doing the virgin thing, mm -hmm. we were suspended in the air.
And it was right before CGI hit, you know, the Monster Squad. It was right before the special effects really took hold. And so uh, it probably looked too stupid to go, you know. I mean, I remember it was fun to do, but, I mean, I don't think it looked that good on camera. They would have put it, you know. And uh, um, what was the other part of that story? Yeah, because if you notice the movie, like, I don't kill any monsters. I'm with Lisa Fuller, my, my sister, the whole time. And uh, everybody else, Rudy's got some great, you know, kills, and Andre's got a bunch, and I didn't... I didn't do it, you know, I didn't get to do that. I made some business cards, like Joe said. So what were you doing making business, you know, you clowning? <laughs> I think it's because I got written out at the end. Like, mm. like you said, I didn't know that about Fred, but that might have happened. I was, I, oh, he did, I remember he walking said, into every scene going like this, I make this scene, you yeah. know, just, just. Well, Fred didn't say that, uh, it didn't say anything like that. He just said that one thing he remembered about you is that you were constantly going off script and improvising. Uh, Rob, I want to be director Kiger is what they, a uh, nickname had, uh, my name. Yeah, I just remember that, and what was the other story I was going to tell you? Okay, so it was kind of weird how it happened, but, like, Ryan and Rudy, you know, Ryan and Ryan and Andre became really close. Mm -hmm. And me and Brent did, because kind of, like, they were clicking up and we were. And so um, I remember going to Brent's high school, you mm -hmm. know, like, in West. I thought it was farther, but I just read the other day, um, in, in order to tell the right story here, is that uh, he lived in Westlake Village. And I remember going to school, and, like, I don't know why, I went to the class. <laughs> And like he's telling it, this is the guy I'm doing a movie with, and uh, they they wanted to beat me up over there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but like it's probably Rob being Rob or or Patrick. So bottom line is, yeah, I remember hanging out with Brent at his house over there one night, and me and Brent kind of got close, and him and uh, Ryan and. Uh, uh, too short. And so, um, yeah, I just remember, I, I didn't hear he died for a while, you know, I was just gone in Maui. And, 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 and yeah, he got out of acting or something like that. And uh, he, he just had a heart attack in Vegas as a, as a lawyer or something. He was in a pre-law, I don't know what it was, but it was really sad. Well, it's you know? really sad that he never really got to see the popularity of the film. Like, because yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. it had this cult following years later. Yeah, yeah, well, what do you think the reason is? I mean, I heard stories like how it brought back Dracula, Frankenstein. And, you know, they hadn't been in a movie in a little while. And it's kids fighting monsters, which is, you know, like, I guess, novel approach. But, I mean, what what what, what attracted you to the movie so much? Um, It's kind of like reliving your childhood. No, yeah, I think it has a lot to do with nostalgia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just, uh... So, yeah, I just remember uh, that... Uh, that, um, you know, uh, I was in summer camp when it done it, you know what I mean? But, I mean, I remember thinking, I didn't think it was a big budget thing, you know? I didn't I didn't expect much, but I was kind of um, bummed at what happened with me and Andre. It, it lingered, but I kind of forgot it. Go there, your name. Robbie Tiger. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't mean to quiz my name, bro. Patrick. Patrick, all man, fat kid party. Yeah. You know they did uh, a documentary recently. Yeah, I just heard that's what I'm talking about, like uh, like why they didn't contact you. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I was, I'm friends with Andre on another Facebook name, but I mean, I sent him a request on this name like a year ago. But I mean, I'm gonna, you know what I want to do? I want to um, get that apology to him. Uh, actually, Joe, my friend, gave me his email. Um, I actually got to show you what I wrote. See, I just, I like to make the jokes of everything. So, so I put, uh, I started off the thing. It's to Andre guy. I put, Yo, Dre, this is easy. We got to squash this. <laughs> <laughs> I did, bro, like an NWA thing, but, yeah. you know, I did. I, I'm going to show it to you right now because <laughs> I sent it to my friend Joe, and he was laughing. But um, there hasn't been a big, you know, up, like, but, I mean, I've just kind of been Your name and Patrick. in Maui, and they just kind of used that as far as, but, I mean, if they're doing the Comic-Con and I was right here in San Diego, it's kind of a bummer, you know, I mean. Yeah. Um, and, what, and how did you end up in Ma Maui? Uh, dude, I got on the wrong flight. No, no, my dad, my dad had a, <laughs> same again down there. My dad had a, a, a company. This is how I got into acting. My dad is a really genius. He had a company called a Videography, and I remember being a kid going into a studio. It was a studio on on like uh, I just forget in Venice somewhere. But um, he had a, um, a studios, and like he did a, a live commercial during the Super Bowl. It was called Videography, and in his office he had a letter from Webster's Dictionary saying thank you for creating this work. And it was video and graphic. You know, that's a huge word now, but back then. Yeah. And so all he did was combo up two. But, I mean, that's pretty cool. And then he did, like, a live commercial during the Super Bowl, which went south of his slits. And he did, like, a square logo. And their logo was, like, kind of, like, in front of his crazy. Like, as they're going, like, 10, 9, 8. For, that's the way he tells it. Anyways, so he did Barney Miller, a black, uh, I think the first black video on MTV. Yeah. So, and then in, like, 82, he, uh, he just left it all. <laughs> He just, 
he went on a honeymoon to Maui. He got a newlywed wife named Denise and a really pretty lady. And literally, like, he loved Maui and she didn't. And she went back and he stayed. <laughs> That's so crazy, dude. That's typical of my dad. Uh, and I was telling Sean the story here of what he did for this virtual convention. He forgets that it's virtual. <laughs> and he tells the senior living place he lives, we're going to need more parking. And then, go ahead. Uh, your name? Yeah, your name. And so he goes over to the San Luis Rey Mission <laughs> and tells him how his son's going to be putting on a convention. Yep. No, I'm not kidding. This is a, he's telling me this story about three weeks ago. I'm like, Dad, I told you I'm going to meet somebody in a hotel. I'm going to sign them all. It's going to be done. There's no convention. COVID. It's down there. Yeah, and then he gets mad at me for telling him, like, he wanted to pick your hotel. I'm like, dude, and then we're going to get, like, he wanted to be so involved. And then in the end, like, he's just MIA. You're just crazy, bro. He's got the quickest onset of our, our Parkinson's and Alzheimer's I've ever seen. It's really sad. It's like, he told me the people at Google were after him the other day. Like, no, a couple months ago. And I'm like, what do you mean, with your email? <laughs> you know, I mean, he did have some prestige, but no. And so, I, I mean, like, it's really sad to me right now. I feel like I lost my dad, you know, and I love the guy. He had, so then he moved to Maui, you know, he stayed in Maui, right? Mm -hmm. And so he saw that uh, on Maui, there's a big volcano called Haleaka. And uh, he was renting bikes in Lahaina, where it's a tourist. And he decided to uh, start, and NASA had just built a big uh, telescope up there. And he decided to start a bike ride down this volcano, because it's all downhill. You know what I mean? And it's gravity assisted, so any tourist, you know, can do it. And it, he started an industry there. It was called Cruiser Bob's Maui Downhill. So it was probably... Let's do this edit. one a little bit lower down. That's great. Thank you. Those eyes, you know what I mean? <laughs> so bottom line is, like, there's probably 400 people working the mountain right now that, you know, because of that, you know, uh, idea. And what's crazy is my dad was trying to get somebody to invest in it, and he met a former cop named Rich Goodenough. And, 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 and it happened Rich to be... Rich Good Enough? Yeah, that was his name. And so, it, it literally, so, uh, he's trying to get this guy to invest. He took him on the bike ride, and then they, they're walking by a place called the Pioneer Inn, a bar, and they see Anton Williams, who I told earlier was with Ron Howard. Yeah. And my dad sees him outside. He's outside the bar where Anton Williams is eating, and he says, hey, I'm Robbie Kiger's dad. He says, no way. And, and Anton Williams went on the bike ride with my father and this guy, Rich, good enough. And it turned out that was the investment or that was the nudge he needed to invest with my dad. You know, and Rich just closed his company about two years ago. He had, they split about 10 years after it started. It's called Cruiser Bob's Maui Downo. And um, then they split, you know, and one Cruiser Bob's in the Maui Downo. And they're the two leading companies. My dad was there 83 to 96. So the cruisers of pot. So, 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 yeah, my dad and Anton Williams went on the bike ride that next day. You know, loved it, and, 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 and my dad had a book right now. He, he has a book. So, I mean, um, yeah, Anson Williams approved it, you know, and my dad got invested, and the rest is history. I mean, there's a lot of jobs on that, you know, mountain. Your name and Patrick. A lot of people died. There's buses going up. There's people, you know, there's people that, you know, hit. When he started, the only place that would insure him was Lloyd's of London, because they never heard of a biker down the road. You know, back then, you could do a luau and a boat trip. And what he did was open up a lot of entrepreneurs' ideas, eyes on like zip, zip lining or all, a bunch of stuff, you know. And, and Maui is one of the top destinations in the world where you can do all that stuff. And they do it all over the world, and every place a bunch of different types of things. But my dad kind of, and and what he did there, Regis went on it. I remember Regis and his daughters in a, and uh, he wasn't riding; he was in a. Uh, no, Robbie Kiger Patrick. He was in what's it called when the car doesn't have a roof? Oh my God. Convertible. That is crazy right now. Okay, don't do drugs, guys. <laughs> Let's go. Over so yeah, he was in a convertible, Regis doing his show live. Yeah, and and going. We're on a bike ride, uh, uh, ten thousand foot. It was the steepest cave road in the world because it was ten thousand feet and thirty eight miles, all downhill. And so um, Regis, and then the real world, the second season when uh, they had the gay guy who died in Puck, mm -hmm. San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. And they went on it, and, and it's, my dad perfect. instead of doing the bike ride down a volcano. <laughs> He takes him to Hana, you know, which is like the rainforest, and like he has no ex expertise on how to camp out. On a, and so it starts raining on him. My dad's like trying to get them all to follow him and stake the tent or something. And my dad, they, they clown him. The road shows this is the official rock we're going to be using. <laughs> and everybody's getting in the van. Just your name, though. And so, um, bottom line is. Like, he, he did the wrong trip. A girl, Ra the girl, Rachel, that was, like, with two guys, Puck and the other guy, almost died when she didn't go out off a um, waterfall jump. She just kind of let go and, like, scraped the side. It was just... Your name and Patrick. No permits. It's kind of gorilla, you know, going on. <laughs> I, I told Dad, what are you doing? And he did the same thing he did with videography, which is just pack up and leave one day. 
You know what I mean? Like literally, like I had two multi million dollar companies that could have came to me if he had done chapter eleven or a variety of things. I don't know, but instead he just left. <laughs> Your name and Patrick. And I mean, I could tell you a bunch of other stories. He's a genius, but it's really sad right now. I mean, I'm Patrick. Um, I love my dad. He's a great guy, but um, he's disappointed recently. You know, I mean, that's a, and I and I disappointed as a son. Just too, your so name. It's kind of humbling, but I mean, well, um, Alzheimer's is, is oh, the yeah, worst, yeah. man. I yeah, mean, yeah, but it gets worse. You know? Yeah, I know, I know. No, no, I, I, a, a, I, a restraining order was granted, oh. and I said to the judge, "I don't harm him, and I don't threaten him." And it was granted because he got all these people to write letters. A virtual one on the phone. It, it, the story's crazy, Sean. But what he did about four months ago is say, I'm not going to honor that because you're my son. <laughs> and so we've been going like that. But I mean, he's just so yes, no. Well, he lost he lost the ability to text, email, open. You know, and he was a programmer. He was pretty good at, you know, doing that stuff. I mean, it's just like, it's really sad. Like, mm -hmm. and now he's just losing it. It's just, uh, yeah. like, um... It's, I like I'm not even watching because I'm I'm 17 miles away and I can't. But I mean, let's go in that really corner. Your name Patrick. And uh, bottom line is like he wasn't there as a kid. You know he wasn't a part of the acting thing. He got me into it and then left. You know when I was 10. So I mean, like um, where was your mom I, during yeah, all My this? mom has passed away like oh. in 2014 or something like that in Vegas. But see, she and my sister raised me, and my sister has a voice like mine, like bellows. Too bad we don't have any army. We'd be singers. She has six assistants at Universal Music. You know, she's a big wig. She runs the finance side. Just your name. And literally, her voice is so loud that um, the, her assistants had to move their cubicles down the hall because they couldn't hear the clients on the phone when Randy just, you know, so loud. But she's... Just your name there. She's helping him. You know, she came down the other day and we, they took him to the VA. It's just really sad, you know. I mean, I, I love the guy, but... Uh, um, I don't know how much longer he's going to be here. And his mom, my grandma, is still alive. Wow. In, in Whittier. Yeah, and she had three antique booths in an antique mall for 35 years. So I got presidential pins and I got all this <laughs> stuff. No, and, and she's still alive. I mean, literally, like, she may outlive me. And that'd be crazy. You know what I mean? How old is she? Like, 97. And she doesn't want all her stuff. My dad doesn't want it. I'm going to get it. And I mean, it's, it's, it's cool stuff. I mean... A lot of crystals and a lot of glass that I'm not really into, but a lot of like cool, like the original food stamps that are in the stamps in the book, mm -hmm. and then a original slinky. Yeah, is that the one that goes down the thing? Yeah. 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 Right, okay. Yeah. So uh, I'm kind of like you know a collector, a hoarder. I don't know. I got a lot of jerseys and hats and backpacks and stickers and and uh, I, I told my dad when we went to visit my grandma, I said because he doesn't, he's a minimalist, but he said I said now I know where I got it from, Dad, <laughs> Grandma, you know. No, I'm so, driving, right, Sean? I'm driving. Okay, so go ahead. So Mark Walton says that you are his favorite character in the film, Monster Squad. How? I didn't kill any monsters. <laughs> that, maybe that's why. Maybe he's a monster sympathizer. Who knows? Um, so he wanted to know how you felt about the movie when it came out and how you feel about looking looking back on it now. Well, I was uh, um, somebody that wasn't, like, in pursuit of being the big star. I mean, I, it felt like the biggest blockbuster that I'd done or the one, but... um. I was at summer camp, and it was in the theater so short that I remember getting back and being like, how'd that movie do? And it, no, nothing back, and then I started high school, and nobody knew that, I, you know what I mean? So I didn't go see it in the theater. So literally, like, I was, like in shock. I was in shock in Maui yeah. when when they, my dad contacted me. He's like, I'm their pseudo agent. And I'm like, no, dad, you know what I mean? They were trying, but they're doing an anniversary issue for this movie called Monster Squad that was a dud, and it's awesome. I love you guys, and I appreciate it. I thought it was a good movie, fun movie to do, but, I mean, I just love that it's gotten a good following, and, and you know, it's it's made its mark. It, it stands up. You know, that's mm -hmm. what one of the fans told me, Joe. It stands up the test of time. Why don't you turn it around so you can just be like, hey. And how do you feel about it now when you, when you see I'm, it now? I'm blessed. Look what I'm doing right now. This is, watch this, watch. We're going to play a game right now. 20. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's called 20. Okay, here. Please, 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 take so, one on so my phone, my phone. I know it's ghetto, but I'm getting a new phone tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your favorite part about Monster Squad, is this right here? No, 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 the money being handed to me in this bed. Um, but no, I was wondering about the room here. Can I get, a, like, a date later? Or? I'm just kidding. <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> but, um, you're going to leave the room here? I'm sorry. So, um... 
Yeah, I mean, that, wait, that's 40? This, this represents 60? See what I'm saying, guys? We're going Sizzler. You know, it's <laughs> awesome. It's, it's awesome. I mean, uh, it's, more, it's more than I could have ever hoped for. Sean Havlin wants to know, does Wolfman, in fact, have nards? You're going to have to ask, not Pecky, but Andre Gower, because that's the whole premise of this uh, sequel. But I can tell you that I didn't have much uh, interaction with the monsters. If you don't remember, I was making business cards, okay? That's what I was... No, so I was with my sister, uh, Lisa Fuller, who I was trying to do a little... Well, it's not really incest, right? Because she wasn't really... My, okay, so anyways, she was beautiful, you know? And, and I really kind of had a chance with her one, one time when she came and ate in, the, in my trailer, bro. But you know who was there? Bud freaking Bundy. Like I told you earlier, he screwed that one up. That would have been my one chance. And the problem is I was 14. I might have gotten... And it took another, like, four or five years, bro. <laughs> You know, it didn't happen like six weeks later, bro. I didn't parlay the acting thing into, you know, much. Yeah. <laughs> this is a little TMI or what? So you know any good jokes? Um, yeah, I do. Uh, should I go race it or no? <laughs> no, I'm just wondering. What do, you call, what do you call a black guy flying a plane? A pilot, you racist! <laughs> I love that joke, bro. That was actually a good one. Another fan told <laughs> me that a, one. It's a, it's a non-racist joke. Yeah, yeah I, I tell black people that joke. Yeah. I do. And now here's the one I made up, though. Now you know, I tell black people straight that joke because it's not racist. You don't get in trouble. But you tell that after they've told a couple others, you know, mm -hmm. and then you because they think it's gonna, so. Uh, you know the term once you go black, you never go back, right? Okay, of course you do. You're a black guy. I say, I say, well, I made up my own for the white man. <laughs> once you go white, you probably never will again. But fuck it, I got my chance. <laughs> Just comparing it to that term, you know, you never go back, so it's, oh, that's pretty funny. Now, right. Sean, I do need you to go to the store. I told you earlier, extra small, mini, use size, micro, macro, Trojans. Okay. That's good material. Okay, so Glenn N. wants to know uh, if you recall any stuff that was shot that might have got cut out of the film. Um... Me in the vortex, you know, everybody that was at the Jeep talking about the amulet, you're not a virgin, are you? There, we, we, and Ryan mentions it, we were suspended in the air. You know what I mean? We, 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 we did a whole thing, production, but I think it looked really stupid or something because it was cut. And it was a bummer because, I, I mean, that would have been my, like, uh, uh, portion of the uh, uh, ending that, you know, got cut out because I was just over there with the virgin who wasn't a virgin instead of killing monsters, which would have been fun. But yeah, uh, us, me, and I think, now I don't think Scary German, but Ryan and Lisa and uh, even the dog or something, you know, even the Ashley, I can't remember, but we were suspended right by the church in the air, you know, and, and that all got cut, you know. Um, um, a little known story is that one day we hear ambulance, we're in on the set in, in, in Century City, uh, Culver City, and we hear uh, ambulances, you know? And what was happening was Michael Jackson was filming a Pepsi commercial and then stage over, two stages over maybe. Um, and I don't know if even Andre or Ryan knew that Michael Jackson was getting into an ambulance because that's where he got burned, is what I heard. You know, but I remember hearing the ambulances and, and thinking, what's going on? But I don't remember anybody, other cast members there seeing it because I saw it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Your name and Patrick. And uh, yeah, that, it, there's just some cool side notes like that. Doug Llewellyn, you know the guy from uh, like the Judge Wapner, you know yeah, the guy yeah, who interviewed yeah. him on the, the real tone. He came in our school, uh, like where we were doing the um, our schoolwork every day, and uh, like, like interviewed us. <laughs> I don't know how to explain, it, but yeah, he, I didn't think he did anything besides Wapner, but I mean he he uh, came in and interviewed us over there. Huh, Doug Llewellyn. No yeah, Doug Llewellyn. Yeah, Doug Llewellyn <laughs> came in into our classroom. Interview. That's a name you don't hear often. I know. I don't know how I came up with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I would even remember Doug Llewellyn's name. Now, this is England fan. Okay, I, I need a Leicester jersey. I love jerseys. Now, we do have this one right here. You know, I'd be willing to sign it. And get my, you know, well, this is Chelsea. That's a, that's a big name team. I like mm -hmm. I like the little man. You know, the little story of Leicester. You know, that was awesome. You know, wasn't that cool? Yeah, that was a championship. Yeah, 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 that's awesome. So you're looking for a, a Leicester jersey? Lester. I'm looking for a blonde. Lester. blonde? Lester? Lester. Yeah, Lester. That's how it's actually pronounced? Okay. So a blonde, she would know. A blonde, a blonde maybe 5'3 through 5. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is awesome. Look at this poster. The ir irony of Stephen King rules on Andre's shirt. Mm -hmm. You know, and I had filmed uh, Children of the Corn. You know, uh, where am I? Look at the, this. This is not matching this. You see what I'm saying? There's a disconnect there. So, but yeah, um, so, uh, yeah, Andre with the uh, Stephen King rules, and it was like kind of irony to me that I had done Children of the Corn. 
You know, I always wanted to be a pro-black basketball player growing up, even doing movies. <laughs> but God had other plans. <laughs> David West would like to know what your favorite scene was in to film in Children of the Corn. The the final when I when I tell uh, Peter Horton throw it right this time because that that was one where the fire state firemen were there and, and they had you know the the mole in the ground or the monster in the ground that was a. Uh, a tractor pulling, you know, some sort of dirt, and, and I had to run alongside it, and it just, I liked the big, and it was windy, and it was just, it was awesome to do. That was really fun to do. You know, Children of the Corn's a great movie, but it's ruined with that shitty, like, animation at the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I don't like your tone of your attitude right there, Sean. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I had everything to do with that animation, because including starring, I was an animator at 13. <laughs> it looks like a 13-year-old did that No, no, animation. yeah, yeah, I don't know what they're doing, because it's like six different types of monsters, but either way, I watch out for he who walks behind the road at your pad, bro. There you go. Dude, this is awesome, bro. You know, I'm running out with this one, bro. <laughs> See you later, guys. Yeah, go ahead, <laughs> Susan Mitchell wants to know what your top five favorite horror films are. Um, if you have a top five. I uh, fuck scary, dude. I mean, I liked uh, Freddy Krueger. My name's Kiger. We're kind of related. We look alike, so there's that. <laughs> uh, I liked uh, Jason, Friday the 13th. I like Monster Squad, I like Children of the Corn, and I like a uh, little known film but called uh, Annie. Those are my top five words. Annie? Redhead small <laughs> man scared me. <laughs> yeah, but so, uh, you know, I, I I don't really, I'm not a horror guy. I, I like comedy, but I mean, I happen to do two horror flicks that really hit, so I mean, I'm happy about it. You doing it? Now I am. It's tough to peak at 13, guys. Don't ever try to do it. <laughs> Ian Goring wants to know. Ian! He wants to know what your audition was like for Children of the Corn and Monster Squad. Wow, that's a great question. Now, that's, um, I actually um, was so into baseball cards. Uh, for Children of the Corn, I was talking about how the whole town was, I don't know, um, the whole town was empty, you know, of adults and like anybody manning the stores and everything. And I'm like, so you can go into the 7-Eleven to steal baseball cards? And my mom called me when I got home. And that was the only time she yelled at me and I got in trouble because I didn't do it right. But they saw something in me, I guess. Because I was called back to do another one. And I never got in trouble for my interviews because I always interviewed pretty well. But this one, I don't know. I was on some baseball card trip. And uh, uh, the second time around, I remember, uh, not Fritz. Yeah, Fritz. Fritz? No, that, yeah. yeah, Fritz was the director of... Uh, uh, your name, Patrick, and what's German for please don't murder us? Dude, that's a great line. I've seen this guy's online. What's his name? The guy. I don't know. You don't know? No. That's the best line I think I have. So what's the line? Uh, so we're in scary German guy's house, you know, and like, uh -huh. we're, we're, I think we're meeting him at the start. And so I say, you know, we're like, oh, and I'm like, what's German for don't murder us? You know? Oh. Because <laughs> we didn't know the language part. Yeah. But um, that guy was cool. I mean, I just remember filming with him for a day. The mummy was a good guy, you know, but I mean... Dracula and Frank said they were all I'm just kidding no they're all cool Tom Newton wouldn't meet us yeah. you know I mean he wouldn't meet us he's a method actor yeah you know and I was trying to meet him like I would sneak up like I was I remember going behind the dressing room because I wanted to see him he was like 6'6 six, six, you know but like he would like sneak into the set get you know get his costume up early and like just wouldn't meet us he wanted us to know him as Frankenstein you know, and once I saw him in another movie, I think the one with the the the, the superhero Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, where oh, the, last action. Yeah, yeah. Once I saw him, I said he looks like Frankenstein without the. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, he was. I, I don't really. I only knew him as Frankenstein, but yeah. I, what about I, your audition for Monster Squad? Monster Squad. Um, dude, I just remember. Uh, I remember the couch. Now Andre tells the story how he picked me over Scott. Uh, what's his Seth Green. Because Seth Green got a little crazy at the mall, and Andre had known me, so he didn't pick... Andre, I was told recently by a fan that Andre got to pick his co-stars, which is, like, that's very surprising to me. That, that's cool, I didn't know that. They, that. That they went, you know, it was Andre's boat. I, I was just a, a passenger, and I thank you for taking me on it, Andre. I'm glad Seth, uh, little known Seth, didn't become anything. You know, there's no yeah. cartoon he's in, or no big movie. Like and you, I am in, you know, middle America, just kind of... You feel like you robbed Seth of a career? I did, I, did. I, feel, like, I feel like Seth's going to write me, you know, and, and ask. You know, I, I mean, <laughs> that's so funny. But I mean... I'll tell you, have you ever seen a live play on, on, on TV? They're, they're rare, right? Live play? Well, I did one called All the Way Home. And we're talking William Hurt, Sally Field, Ned Beatty, John McIntyre, 1981 at the Shriners, USC. And I didn't have any lines. But we practiced for like six weeks at that church on Highland. 
I remember uh, 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 Corey Haim got kicked off, you know, and uh, Jeremy Litt had like the whole the whole play. He was he was Rufus. He was the, the main kid. guy. He was the kid from uh, Twilight Zone, the movie. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So Jeremy Litt. But I had no line. But the problem was, is I was rehearsing with everybody, so I knew everybody else in line, and I'm eight, you know, maybe yeah. And so when the live play went all the way home. I'm coming out and I think I'm holding like William Hurt's hand and I see my mom in the audience. So I wave at mom because there she is. Yeah. yeah. And the, my mom tells a story, God bless her soul, that like the camera's starting to beard off. And then since I knew everybody's lying that I didn't have any, I was going to help them with theirs. Oh, shit. And I mean, literally like... <laughs> Your name, Patrick, and then doesn't count question mark. And so literally like, I mean, I like to think that I've held that whole industry back a couple decades because so I was mounting everybody's lines. I waved at mom and then... I, uh, there's a car crash in the, in the, in the play, you know, but and we're pretending to be in the car, but I'm looking early. I'm prepping for this, <laughs> you know, I'm prepping early for this, uh, crash that's going to happen, but it's supposed to be kind of like a, you know, imp, you know, imp, you know, what's it called? Surprise or no, dude, improvise? It's called nitrous oxide, 1989 to 92. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, it, it, not improv, the, where it happens at, like, fans, help me with that word. Whoever does gets a drink. <laughs> so what what are you trying? What's the word you're trying to figure out? I'm, I, I, uh, improvisation, no, the one where it happens by accident. You don't you don't know it. Oh god, I thought you were going to see. Uh, forget it. Mama. Accident? Yeah, I guess. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, that's probably. It. <laughs> see, I had a lot of accents, guys. <laughs> what did Lawrence Taylor say in that Adam Sandler movie? Don't smoke crack. Oh yeah, don't smoke. Crack. <laughs> My favorite movies are Tommy Boy. I love that movie. Mm -hmm. I love Chris Farley. I wish I wish he had more. Um, I really like Sandler. You know, I I wasn't a starting one in 2000 when it went on to New Year's. Yeah, uh, 2000, uh, the, the New Century. So, but my buddy was a valet. In, uh, in, 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 your in, name, and then you're not a virgin, are you? I, I am actually. <laughs> so, so, so my buddy was a valet in like Homey Hill, Beverly Hills. So we got an idea, you know. And what we did was we were. Uh, my buddy Johnny was uh, uh, my buddy Larry was Johnny, uh, who's at John Adam Sandler puts all his friends in all his movies, you know. Mm -hmm. So his be his good friend, his assistant was named Johnny, and he was like the cross-eyed linebacker in uh, Waterboy, you know, mm -hmm. big guy. And his best friend was Larry, my coworker. And so um, we were at Sandler's house, and I remember that was cool. And then at like 10 p.m., me and my buddies decide to go, and I go, and we put rain gear on. You know, we have rain gear. All I can see is here. And we hop this fence in Homeby Hills, and we start climbing. And it's like a half mile. And we had all had the mini cams, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, and basically, half the show, which we got edited later, is us going up. But once we get up to the top... And Patrick, and then, oh man, fat man. Fat kid farted. Cool. And so we get up to the top, and then we take off our ring gear and jump down, and we wipe each other's face, and we see some security. And they're guarding the back of the grotto. If you've heard of the, mm -hmm. the, the, the Hefner Mansion? Yeah. And that's where we snuck into. And we get there about 11.40, and we have cameras, and you're not allowed to have cameras, you know? But we had them, and they were already up there with it, so they figured we were some sort of licensed thing. <laughs> so the, it, we edited it, and we, it's called Stairway to Heaven, you know, and it's us going up this, you know, because it doesn't look like anything great at the start, you know, us going over this fence, which was, like, barbed. But, um, and we make our way up, and we thought we were caught. Farted. Farted. So we make our way up top and we get away with it. You know, you see me dance with Pamela Lee and in the jacuzzi and half, I mean, the whole thing, you know, on New Year's 2000, you know, we so, were there. So where is this video now? I don't know, dude. I mean, I have, I had a copy on VHS, but I mean, that, that was with my mom. I don't know. I, I, it is online. It's called Stairway to Heaven. We're going to find it. We're going to get it's it It's online somewhere? Yeah, it's got to oh. be. It's got to be. A couple of the guys that I went to high school with, I mean, they made sure that the valet, Eric and, and Nick. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome, bro. Like, dude, I want, I want a copy of that. Um, I hung out with, uh, not Charlie Sheen, his brother, Emilio, for like two hours. We were, I don't know, we were just kind of, we had sinus problems. Or, I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Emilio. I don't think you're ever going to. Emilio watches up my channel constantly. Former child star. I don't yeah. do that anymore. Fine. No, he is. He messes me all the time asking to be on. I'm like, dude, come on, chill. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I remember walking out of a, a, a bathroom at a club called Garden of Eden. And I opened the door and it's Hefner, right, right at the door. And he's my eye level, you know. But I mean, he's Hefner, and he's got a huge head, bro. Huge head. Did he die? Yeah. He did. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah. He didn't have sex with anybody hot or anything. Yeah. No, I mean, dude, literally. Like, 
And at that same club, that same night, I was talking to Charlie Sheen, and I started asking him about the Yankees, and he's a Tigers fan, you know? But I, I don't know. It was just, I don't know. It's cool. And then Mini Me was in a booth. There's a, you see this booth, and it's a hot blonde, hot blonde, you know, sitting. Mm-hmm. Hot blonde and then Mini Me standing, all at the same level. <laughs> hot blonde, hot blonde. It was funny, bro. Yeah, that was a good time. Michael Carranza wants to know if there was ever talk... Uh, that you ever heard of of a Monster Squad sequel back in the day? I mean, dude, I'm down. I'm ready. Okay, I'm ready. I'm I'm gonna do more than make business cards this time. You know, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna actually make like uh, resumes too, and we're gonna sit. Huh. No, I mean, I, I'd be I'd love it. You know, as adults or something like they come back. But I mean, unfortunately, Brent's gone. You know, Brent's not with us. But I mean, it could always run. The with momentum's us. there, guys. You guys are bringing it. You know, but where were you in '87? You know, when the, it was in the theater. That's when I would have been a star. You can always run with the storyline that fat kid died of diabetes. You well, know? he farted too big or something. <laughs> oh, my. This is fun, dude. This is fun. You having fun? Yeah, well, I mean, I've done two conventions in my you know, career. The first time, I don't know if you know. Now, listen. Why am I doing That's that, right, bro? Just to put Patrick in the sign of No, I'm going to do the Zodiac on this. <laughs> so, um, Robbie Tiger. Yeah. And so... Um, like at that convention in Indianapolis. Now, I don't know if you know, you kind of fell asleep earlier, Sean, but I was doing like cake stands and shit. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a lady with like some sort of chainsaw against her own chest. I mean, that was cool. You know what I mean? But then she brought the chainsaw out of my room. No. So, so there's a Google picture, dude. Like, dude, they think they, they, they nobody's seen me since 89. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, the, 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 the corrections officer saw, but I mean, besides that, so... So they attribute this dude to me because <laughs> I think he was next to me when I was doing handstands. I don't know. But I mean, I call Google. I'm trying to, you know, get them to take it off because I always got to be like, I don't know who the hell that is. It's the second picture and it's still like a recent one. So they think this is, this is me now. You know, and it's, uh, you know, I mean, it's not. <laughs> That's all I got to say. But every time I tell somebody to search my name, which is like hourly, you know, but right here, this guy, it's not me, dude. I don't, but I think it's from that, that, First convention that we did. Right here, dude. It. It's not me, dude. Which guy? This guy's the second. That's me and Monster Squad. But this guy right here. That's not me, though. I don't know who that, that is, bro. Click on it, though. Maybe it's a picture of you. No, oh, dude. I'm telling you. Weird. 80s kid, yeah, yeah. I think that's from that convention. Huh? I mean, that's not me. You know what I mean? But if you know who you are, dude, like, let it. Can we t- call Google or something? <laughs> they don't have anything of me. You know what I mean? They don't have anything. Thomas Coons Jr. wanted to know what it was like working with Jack Warden. Jack Warden is the coolest man I ever met. Now, he taught me how to do this, which is awesome. I can throw off any athlete with this. I got into sports after, so it's going to look like it's going to come with a fastball, Sean, but it's going to come with a slow ball. So you go like this, you know, wind up, but then it's going to come from here instead of the pitch, you know. So you go like this. He taught me how to do this. I don't know if you saw it, but saw it, it. It, 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 <laughs> it throws him off with the big right, but it's coming with the... So you see, I mean, Jack Warden was great. Uh, that series was fun to do. Um, it was good. It was like top ten, you know. But and we did three years. And you know what we didn't do is do enough episodes to get on like syndication, where I would be getting weekly, monthly checks. We yeah. did like a little. <laughs> he didn't want to do a third, se- a third season, a fourth season, you know. But little known, George Clooney got to start on there. Not to start, but John Rubenstein's big in the uh, uh, Tony Awards. You know the plays. I once saw him about a decade ago. But Jack was great. Me and him had a lot of fun. It was also fun filming with uh, 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 Mr. T in an episode of the A-Team, mm. which I have on YouTube. I had to buy it myself. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, me and Mr. T hung out for like a week, and he, this is 83 or something like that. Clubber Lang, he was just did Rocky. He had his own cartoon, his own serial. Dude, my name? Yeah, it's Patrick and then the quote. And so, bottom line is I'd bring my friend David to come meet that. Pa- yeah, oh, Patrick first and then that. Okay, so so... I bring my friend to meet Mr. T, you know, because he he's a man. So we bring him, and he's sitting with a couple other of his friends on um, on the chairs, and he's not facing me. So I come up behind him, and I put my hands on his neck because we had, like, scenes together, me and him. And, uh, and, and one of the chains, like, I unlocked it. <laughs> it fell onto his lap, and I'm trying to introduce him to my friends. Mm-hmm. But he looks up, what are you trying to steal my chain for, fool? <laughs> Hey, boy. We got scared. You're taking my train. No. Well, I'm like, this is my friend David. We're going to go. Well, yeah, you know, but he, <laughs> then they just smile. You know, he's cool. He's short. You know, I, I mean, Mr. T, this is a, you know, like a challenge. If you ever want to. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, he's an intimidating fella, you know. Yeah. 
but he wasn't that tall. But that don't matter, you know what I mean? But like, um, he, uh, he, yeah, he, he was a man, and, and it was great. I saved his life actually. If if I could show, he could. They'd never let an eight or ten year old do what I did in this show, which was run into a burning building, and I remember doing it, you know. And I. Uh, your name, Patrick, and then you're not a virgin, are you? Uh, not me. Patrick. And so, yeah, I uh, I got to film Mr. T and Margaret, uh, Ann Margaret. And yeah, that was a, a, a TV movie of the week called, uh, uh, called uh, Who Will Love My Children? It was a true story about the Faye family in, uh, I don't know where they were, but the mom has cancer. She has 10 kids and she has to adopt them all out. Mm -hmm. And I'm the one kid that didn't get adopted. Uh, Missy Gold, Tracy Gold from Growing Pains was mm -hmm. in it. Soleil was in that one too. Um, so that was fun to film. And, and you know, Anne Margaret's was cool as hell. And uh, was she with Elvis? I don't know. I think she dated Elvis. But um, I just worked with some really like influential people like that. You know? Patty. Uh, we're wrapping this up now. So anything you want to say to the fans out there, Children of the Corn, Mantra Squad. Roxy Carmichael, whatever. Yeah, Roxy was a huge hit. I think 19 people went to that, and 18 of them were polls that saw a sign saying under 18, not a minute. Either way, um, I just thank you guys for you know bringing me back to where you know I should have stayed and want to be. But it's fun. You know, it was a great time, and I'm just glad that you guys like kept us afloat. You know, because because uh, this is my rent. You know, I was getting evicted. <laughs> no, but bottom line is like they're really fun movies to do, and I was surprised they weren't as big a success as they were. Uh, you know, with Children of the Corner and Monster Squad. But, I mean, you guys kept it alive, and I just appreciate that. You know, and if you guys can send my checks to my actual P.O. box over there, I'm just No, but I appreciate it. And, guys, I wouldn't be making this money without you. And I'm glad it brings you to another place, you know, that back as your youth, because it was great to do, and I wish I could be living as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, fans. Thank you, Andre. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Sean. And, uh, who's this? Tip. Baby's model. Thank you, Tip. Oh, sorry. Oh, shit. Don't, oh, either way, don't hey, step hey. on the meat. Yeah, yeah, well, that's a big hit here. Oh.